Good evening, I'm going to call to order the meeting of Monday, September 9, 2019. Our town manager will be joining us briefly and as indicated, we can start the meeting um, before his return of perfect timing. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Diana Mahan, I'm chair of the select board. To my far right is? John Hurd. Joe Curo. Dan Dunn. Steve DeCourcy. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Doug Heim, town council. Palka Board Administrator. And welcome everyone. Our first item on the agenda is the consent agenda, minutes of meeting August 12, 2019, for approval heat smart lawn signs through 9-30-19, request for a special one-day beer and wine license, 9-20-19 at Robbins Library Reading Room for a private event, request special one-day all alcohol license, 9-22-19 at Robbins Library Reading Room for a private event. Request special one day beer and wine license 92719 at Arlington Center for the Arts for a private event. Request special one day beer and wine license 10419 at the Smith Museum, Jason Russell House for an Arlington Historical Society fundraiser. Request special one day beer and wine license 101319, Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event and a request for a contractor drain layer li license, USA Excavating Inc. out of Bridgewater, Mass. Uh, first, is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded Second. by Mr. Kiro. Um, is there, I believe, uh, agenda item two. Anyone here who would like to speak to any of the items on the consent agenda? I think I saw someone here from Heat Smart, or, or did I not? Oh. If you'd like to just give your name and address. And sure. Uh, my name is Andy Winslow, um, and I live at 63 Situate Street in Arlington. Um, so my name is Andy Winslow um, and I am the lead volunteer coach for the Heat Smart program, which is an energy efficiency outreach campaign that I've been working on um, with Ken Pruitt, the town's energy manager, and a dedicated team of volunteers. So Heat Smart is promoting energy efficient heating and cooling systems. Um, which are both beneficial to the resident because they can save money on their utility bills as well as for the town of Arlington because it pushes us closer to our to achieving our uh, carbon zero climate goals um, at the So our program runs or we're accepting signups for the program through the end of September um, and so as we near these last few weeks, we're trying to do a big push to get as many people to sign up and be aware of the program as possible. At the beginning of the program, um, you allowed us to put a banner on the front of town hall and that was really helpful in spreading the word. And now as we end, we'd like to, um, we're requesting that we be allowed to put lawn signs at public intersections, at high traffic intersections, so that people as they're going to and from Arlington um, will, you know, get the message. And I have a lawn sign here. This is what we would be putting out. Okay. Any so, questions? Yes. No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, anyone else here for consent agenda? Not seeing anyone. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? If not, on, the, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, second by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. We now have 7.15 p.m. public hearings. We have Ms. Jackie Duffy, Jacqueline Duffy from um, Eversource. Good evening. Just name and position for the record. I'm Jackie Duffy, um, Eversource Energy. We'd like to install a concrete base for an electric vehicle charging station on Park Avenue in Arlington. This work is necessary to supply electric service to the electric vehicle charging station. Okay. Um, is there a motion? Move approval of subject to our conditions set forth. Mr. Carroll, seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn, um, any questions? Mr. DeCorsi? Just a question. There were a number of um, additional conditions that were contained in the DPW memo. And did, did you have a, an opportunity I don't think to look I got, at those? I don't think I got that. OK, because there's eight, well, 11 conditions. So we're going to be voting that subject to those conditions. Um, I suppose if we have an issue, you can come back, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, that, that, that was part of our package. Yeah. Okay. You contact Mrs. Kropelko, okay. she can email it to you. Okay. Or what, whichever way you think is. Okay. 
Um, this is a public hearing. I'm wondering, I would like to ask if there are any abutters here who would like to speak to the Eversource petition, Park Avenue, Waters, uh, you, you just are doing Park Avenue. Park, right. Park Avenue. If not, uh, any further questions or comments by my colleagues on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Now Water Street. Now Water Street. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Jackie Duffy, Eversource Energy, would like to install 11 feet of conduit in Water Street. This work is necessary to supply electric power to the electric vehicle charging station. Move approval subject to all conditions set forth. By Mr. Carroll, seconded Second. by Mr. Hurd. Um, any questions or comments from my colleagues? This is a public meeting. I'm uh, calling on any abutters regarding the Eversource petition for Water Street. Hearing none, uh, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, I whipped through that page. He <laughs> 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 he. <clears throat> uh, agenda item 10, request all alcohol package store, BB Powers Corporation, Nilesh Patel, owner manager, 1215 Massachusetts Avenue. And I see we have learned counsel here, so I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor, I represent BB Powers Corporation. With me this evening is Mr. Nilesh Patel. Some of you may know him. He is the long-standing owner of Peter Pan Superette uh, in Downing Square. Um, he's made this application uh, for the uh, premises at 1215 Massachusetts Avenue. I know you have the reports from the department. Um, Mr. Byrne has submitted a report uh, to, uh, to advise the board. This is a prior non-conforming lot. Um, there, uh, it was used in the past by Maria's, uh, by Nicola's pasta and pizza. Uh, there was never um, a parking that complied with the bylaw because it's of the nonconformity. We will get to Mr. Byrne a uh, plot plan, um, and I apologize for the drawing that was very light. That was what Mr. Patel gave me right before the filing. Uh, but Michael has advised that uh, he wants something done by an architect. There'll be no structural changes to the interior of the store. Um, as you know, as you know, the facade is controlled by the redevelopment board. It's uh, on Mass Ave and under environmental design review, the uh, ARB has jurisdiction over the exterior of the premises. You can see from what I filed that Mr. Patel has extensive experience. He has uh, interests in three other um, all alcoholic beverage stores. Uh, and um, I can answer any questions or have him answer any questions if you'd like. This would be, as um, the director of the planning department notes, a substantial improvement to this particular store. And there is, I would suggest, adequate parking along that side of Massachusetts Avenue. Okay, um, Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've long been interested in seeing that spot uh, filled. It's been, it's been vacant for a long time. I'm just wondering, I mean, I, I guess we, we are able to, even with the, the pending issue with the building department, I guess we can approve the application subject to uh, building departments. Um, okay, I'm just wondering if, you, if you're able to answer. Um, I mean, how does the, um, uh, the issue of the non-conforming lot come into play when it's a change of use? As long, you could have a change of use <coughs> under yeah. the bylaw. Yeah. Um, and this change of use doesn't, uh, it's, a, it's a retail use. Can you speak so, right into oh, the microphone? I apologize. I'm sorry. You, you can, can move that chair. You can need to, to move the, the mic too. Yeah, and move the mic. Uh, it has. It can't be a substantial. If you look at the zoning code, yeah, it can't be a substantial change in use, and it can't further extend the nonconformity. The nonconformity is not being extended. The footprint is not being extended, and it's another retail use. Okay. I personally, reading the bylaw, think that. Uh, it doesn't require a special permit because I view it as not a substantial change in yeah. use because it's another retail use. Mm -hmm. I mean, it differs, for instance, by way of example, if you take the old Bailich's 5 and 10, which is a prior non-conforming use because there's no parking and sufficient parking, if that becomes a restaurant, that's a substantial change in use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that would be my... Okay. And, and even, even if... Mr. Byrne determines, and he's the ultimate um, uh, uh, point of determining under the building code. He determines that it uh, requires a special permit. We'll file that with the ARB because they have jurisdiction over that when we file the plans for the facade. Okay, okay. Um, my next question is, um, Mr. Patel, you're going to be continuing to manage 
both this establishment and um, the Peter Pan at the same time, or? No, my brother is going to be manager over there. You Into the manager. microphone, sorry. My brother is going to be manager over there, and I'm going to help him out, too. And I'm going to be work over there, too, in the liquor store. Okay. And we're going to hire some, somebody in the Peter Pan. Yeah, it's just very important that we have clear management authority um, in, in the stores. We've, we've run into instances and in other places where that, that has become an issue. And, and, uh, and, and so sure the board that. knows, Mr. Patel is the manager of record at his store in Witcham, in Stoneham. He is going to apply for a new manager for that location okay. because he's going to manage the Arlington store. Okay, okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, two issues that makes it seem negative but um, first I'd just leave for my colleagues on the table that um, when I first got on the board and we were giving out the all alcohol um, licenses we had like five tenants like five criteria and I know some people didn't apply one of them was the parking issue um, if you can work that out with Mr. Byrne or if this current board wants to say I know before in the past when we first did the um, all alcohol licenses um, we told uh, proponents, you have to have some on-site parking. That was one of the five things. I don't know if the board wants to continue that. I, I just want to put that on the table because I don't have any strong feelings either way. Um, just in light of, you know, we've seen how these work and we know where this is going, so I'm okay with that. Uh, I, I can answer, if I can answer, there are four spaces there now, but they're technically not in compliance with the bylaw, but if the lot is non-conforming and they don't have to alter the spaces, there, there are four spaces there. Okay. And they were used by the prior tenants. Customers. Yeah, as long, it sounds like you can, I did contact um, the building department and the sketches were like in pencil and uh, it looked like- Agreed. One agreed. of my, it looks like my Cindy, God bless her, did them and you really can't, um, we can't get a report from the building inspector regarding the plot plan and you know, have someone sit down and make sure everything is to scale. But I'm happy with um, as long as the building inspector's um, c concerns, issues um, are worked out and resolved, um, similar to what Mr. Carroll said about that. And then my third point is, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm wondering if Mr. Patel can speak to the issue because, uh, especially with an all alcohol store, I know the Pita Pan store um, a couple of times has failed when they've gone in to, I, I just let me finish, sorry. Oh, it's okay. And then when you answer, come to the microphone. Um, I know that's happened. I don't know what steps you took in place. Um, I thought it was more than once. I could be wrong if you say it's once, but I could have sworn I've been in there more than one time when the cigarettes have been down. Uh, but the jewel things have been up. Um, and now where this is an all alcohol package store, um, what training do you and or your future staff or do you anticipate will have to make sure you don't have a single, because even one violation, in an all alcohol store wouldn't be acceptable? And I don't mean to come off negative, I just, it's a concern. We're going to hire the people and they're going to, uh, they're going to be, have a TIP certify certificate with them so they know what they are doing. And are you going to have anything in terms of when someone comes in with... With the ID, going to put the ID checker over also over there. You, you will put the ID checkers, I, you said? Okay. And uh, all the employees going to be TIP certified. And what, would you, what will you do in the event that someone comes in and obviously is giving you a fake ID? No, then we, gonna, we don't want to take it. And we're going to reject the cell. Okay. okay, if you could either check with Attorney O'Connor, maybe check with um, Mrs. Grappelka or Attorney Heim. I know we went through this before, and there may be something set up that if you do get a false ID, it's supposed to be confiscated. Right. Call the non-emergency number. But double check that, please. I, okay. I don't want to make that a condition if it's not. We'll do that. For some reason, I have that in my head. Um, Mr. Dunn. Uh, what is going to be your policy on IDing? Is it, is, some, is it everybody? Is it anyone who looks under a specific age? Or? Oh, about 35. So if they look under If he looks under 35, we're going to ID. We're going to put the sign on the door also like that. OK. Um, and I guess I just this is more of a comment than a question, which is that uh, in our experience with the 
with the, with the restaurants that have had violations. So we certainly have seen more restaurants with violations than we have uh, liquor stores, though we've had at least two liquor store violations that I can think of. Um, they were often with new employees, and the new employees had not been fully trained, and the reason, you, the, these comp the, reason the restaurants had a new employee was because they were short-staffed. And so when they're short-staffed, they're putting somebody out, on the, uh, you know, out to work without sufficient training because they're in a rush, and that was the time that they got in trouble. And so my advice to you is to whatever training, this training program that you're describing is that you, act, you firmly put it in before you actually put the people to work. Because that, in, our, in, you know, in my experience sitting up here, that's the time when you run into trouble. Okay. Mr. Hard. This is a question about the parking. So, and this might be for Doug. So as we're talking about the parking spaces here, that's just to determine if you need a special permit to operate the business. It's not an impediment to us as far as issuing the license, correct? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Hurd. So generally speaking, the board is determining the qualifications of the applicant and to some degree, the qualifications of the location. If the board has extreme concerns that the location is inappropriate, the board could certainly um, reject the license application. The board can approve it without, um, without approving any sort of zoning or, inspection or inspections uh, requirements that the building inspector as both uh, the person in charge of the building code and the zoning enforcement officer would still have the authority to determine that a special permit's needed or not needed or, you know, what have you. Now, the building inspector does not issue the special permit, as everybody knows, uh, but that's... It, you can approve it and basically have conditions upon it that would require some further colloquy between the applicants and inspectional services. Yep. And I'd like to, to see the, an updated plan, but I just want to note that we considered this location in the community host agreements discussion with parking. So it, it was my remembering that when we took that application, we considered that this location did have on street par off street, street parking in the back. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. DeCourse. Yes, just further on the parking, you mentioned this for spaces. Is your intent to allow customers to use those parking spots or employees going to use them or what, what would be your intent once you open? We're going to let customers park. Customers? Okay. See, the issue is that um, the parking is not five feet away from the residential district. So there would be no parking back there okay. if Mr. Byrne decides that it has to be five feet away. Okay, all right, thank you. And, and I do note in, in your application, you, you have a store in Stoneham and you haven't had any violations or any suspensions of your license mm -hmm. since it opened. Okay, Perfect. thank you. Um, I, I do have one other question. I'm not trying to be extra picky. It's just what we got. It was hard to glean from that. Um, in terms of uh, CCR video surveillance, uh, safety cameras, um, not saying you should, but do you plan on having any of that and where? Yes, we're going to put the security cameras outside and inside. And what will you have them, if you get right to the microphone, they, they yell up at me that they can't, mm -hmm. like you have to talk into it. You can move that chair if you want, put it far back. Um, where do you plan on, in fact, if I had the plans, I wouldn't be asking this. So where, where will they be directed, inside the establishment, outside? Inside we have a separate one, and outside we're going to put four cameras in the four corners of the building. Okay, and what will the inside capture? What will they be, what will the cameras be pointing uh, they're at? They're going to, uh, sidewalks. No, no, the inside camera. What oh, I'm in saying is like some people have, I like walk into mass convenience, and he has a video system that shows three views of the front, shows every aisle. Oh, all the corners, all, everything from inside, we're going to cover it. Okay. And deliveries, that, that will be in the rear? Delivery going to be rear, and sometimes they come in the front too. If it's small delivery, they can come from the front. Okay. And as long as, he's, as, long as you're aware of yes. you know, what the bylaw, well, not so much you, but your delivery drivers, Yeah. Um, <coughs> especially if they're new to Arlington, because we don't have a big market for this. Make sure they're aware of what time they can start delivering and they don't come earlier, just for the neighbors. Yes. Okay, that's my final question. Mr. Dunn and then Mr. Carroll. Um, so when we expanded the all alcohol licenses several years ago and we added uh, several, uh, we added, I think it was three additional ones, one of the 
criteria that the board was really looking for at the time was uh, stores that were, uh, for, for the lack of a better word, they were good fits for Arlington. Like in particular, we were really concerned that uh, we we're going to have um, like some like a lower end store that was like not well kept up, and I think that largely in town we've had liquor stores that have been well kept up. Though there certainly was a period of time where a previous owner of the uh, liquor license on Summer Street was not, and uh, we in fact threatened to pull their license until they uh, fixed their awning, among other things. And so. Uh, I'm kind of curious. I'm curious. What are, What are your thoughts about the exterior, exterior and interior appearance, and what you're aiming for in terms of a, of an experience? Exterior, we're gonna paint the store. We're gonna put the new yawning, and we're gonna put the new signs. And inside, we're gonna do best we can. Thank you. And, and Mr. Dunn, if I may, you know that the front is within the control of the ARB, so I, yeah. I would expect that uh, it might be very similar to what. Uh, they did in the uh, store next to the Stop and Shop with the glass front and yeah. uh, the planters. And I'd say that that is exactly, that is a really good example of a store. I, that, I gave that, that yeah. to my client as the example. Okay, thank you. And, and I guess the only concern is we, we didn't have any of that before us tonight. Right. Normally we do get all that specificity and we can really get a general sense, and I'm going to call Mr. Curo next, of, um, so I'm going to leave it to my colleagues in terms of whether this is approved subject to the conditions um, being uh, reconciled with the building department, or if we um, table postpone it to our next meeting so that we can see the plans, if any of my colleagues feel they need to see that, because that's where we can get a sense. And then hopefully by then the building inspector will be, um, will have some news for us that you know, his issues were satisfied. We, we can do either one. I'm, I'm happy to do either one. I'm, I'm just a little bit uncomfortable because, and I'm not being disrespectful, but literally, as you all know, the, the plan submitted, it, it's, it's just a pencil, light pencil drawing, and there's really n n no detail there. So I'm going to leave it to my colleagues because I can't make a motion. Uh, but Mr. Kira, I'm sorry. You Thank you. No, no problem. I mean, I, I don't actually have a, feel a strong need for that. I, I think that I don't want to put words in his mouth. I think the thrust of Mr. Dunn's question was as much about upkeep and, you know, continuing maintenance. Those are the types of complaints that we've received at other locations. We just, and that does fall under us to, to, to stay on that. Uh, my question was just, do you intend to carry NIPs? Yes. You do? Okay. I mean, NIPs are allowed in town. I just want to just advise you and you know, any, any others that there's a growing sentiment around, around the NIPs and the contribution to litter and being able to be easily concealed. So I could envision a future where, um, you know, there was consideration, regulation. There, there isn't right now. I just I don't know. Thank you. Okay. What is, um, <clears throat> and um, I was wondering if it's okay with my colleagues if we could, um, if and when any future board, select board, um, has an opening or adds an additional all alcohol license that we can, just for efficiency's sake, have something in the application saying that, you know, there, you're required to submit sufficient plot plans. Um, usually what we usually get, we've gotten none of that. I thought maybe you might table this and get us that no, stuff. And, and and I apologize, that was what my client gave me at the very last minute. Yeah. Um, he has hired an architect that I'm working with who's putting together the plan for the ARB and who's drawing that pencil drawing by an architect to submit to Mr. Byrne and we'll submit it to you. Yeah. What you have for the drawing, he's just making that uh, more legible. Yeah. And I guess I'd say to any, anyone in the future, um, make sure that's known up front, because um, I, I am a little uncomfortable that we have nothing, but I don't get to make the motions. Mr. DeCourcy. What, what's the timing on completing plans? Like, how, how long will it um, He was just retained. Um, I would say several weeks. Okay. You know, the thing is that these type of boats, I, you know, if there's a discomfort of a member of the board, I, I, I don't have a problem with you know, asking that we, we table this. I mean, I don't doubt if you want you to miss your time period to get things done, but I, I think the chair is right in terms of you have an application, should be complete, um, so that there is a question. So if it is a matter of a couple of weeks, maybe it can even be done between now and the next meeting if it can be expedited. 
um, you, maybe that's a better practice for us to, 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 to have that in. So Sure. Or the no majority problem. of it. I'm not saying, I, you know, I hey, no I don't see any planters here. Just the majority of yeah. it. But if, if that's a motion to place this at our next meeting in two weeks as an agenda item? Yes. By Mr. DeCourcy. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. And believe me, they won't be all these detailed questions then because there may be a few additional, I doubt it, but we'll have all that info and we've asked a lot here tonight. So I don't want Mr. Patel or Attorney O'Connor to feel we're not respecting your time. No, no, no. Well, we, we thank the board for their time. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Yeah. Any other comments? And if not, on a motion by Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Kiro, to place this on our next reg regularly scheduled September uh, agenda. Say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. When Thank is that the next meeting? Two, two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. I, I will not be here, but I will send someone on my behalf. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We now move to appointments. Conservation Commission, David Kaplan. Term to expire June 30th, 2022. Just come up to the microphone, make sure it faces exactly where your mouth is, and name and address affiliation for the record, please. Hi, uh, David Kaplan, 22 Baker Road, resident. Um, do you want to just give a little brief premiere or, you know, 60-minute thing in terms of association to Arlington, how long you've lived here, a little bit of what your background kind of applies to Conservation Commission, any meetings you might have attended. But you don't have to go too long. It's up to you. No, I've been a resident of Arlington since uh, 2012. I currently work for the City of Cambridge Water Department as the watershed manager. So I manage the water supply. The 24 acres of watershed that we have, uh, about 1,500 acres that we own. Um, I have a team of eight, and uh, I'm excited for the opportunity. Excellent. Is that one O'Ridden still over there? Uh, he's at uh, the Public, Public Works Post. Commissioner. Great, great person, yep. great employee. Arlington, previous on the Mugar and other issues, um, the CSO discharge, mm -hmm. um, considering, you know, where he works, um, he worked very well with the town of Arlington. So great. I'm, I'm very pleased that you're also working there because I sort of know the sentiment of what they do. Um, uh, first, is there a motion to approve by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Kiro? Any questions or comments from my colleagues, Mr. Kiro? Uh, I'll, I'll just say, I mean, I just am continually blown away by the credentials of <laughs> folks who offer their professional expertise to these uh, volunteer commissions and boards. I just want to thank you very much for, for um, doing that. It looks like you can oh, step you. right into the position and know exactly <laughs> which way is up. So. Yep, I've yep. been a commissioner much. for a year and a half before I had to recuse exactly. myself after being an employee of the city. So, sure. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Uh, Conservation Commission Associate Member Michael Gildesgame, term to expire June 30th, 2022. You could just say your name correctly, which I probably didn't, and address for the record. I apologize. Good evening. I'm Mike Gildas Gay, made Kensington Road in Arlington, and um, currently retired. However, I spent 20 years working for the Department of Environmental Management, followed by D DCR, uh, as chief planner and director of the Office of Water Resources for the Commonwealth, which uh, basically dealt with quantity issues. So we dealt with everything from flood hazard management to drought planning, water conservation. We worked with DP on water withdrawal permitting uh, and communities uh, and water suppliers. Uh, followed that with five years with the Appalachian Mountain Club, uh, working on uh, policy issues, legislation, uh, forests, trails, rivers, and so forth for edu education, conservation, and recreation. Before that, I spent some years doing consulting work with a variety of different companies, both domestically and overseas, and I'm currently retired. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to know. Uh, first, is there a motion? Move approval. By Mr. Dunn, second, second. by Mr. Kiro. Sorry, I'm going to put the initials down. Um, Mr. Dunn? I'll steal Mr. Kiro's speech and just say a... Um, thank you, and uh, we really appreciate you know such well-credentialed people volunteering for the town. 
Well, I've been here 36 years, so I figured it's about time to step up. <laughs> and I'll just echo what I said previously, um, the ongoing MUGAR issue um, and what the town's position has been um, regarding that. And usually it's once every 10 years that the NIPTES permit comes up on the uh, MWRA CSO, in right. my opinion, illegal discharges um, into the Alway. We, now, working with Owen O'Red in the city of Cambridge, our town management, we have eliminated, I think, all but three or five. I think it's one in Somerville, two in Cambridge, or one in four, I'm not sure. Um, and what we've consistently done, um, and you know, I've asked someone from Conservation Committee, and it's usually held in Cambridge when the NIPTES permit meeting comes up in consultation if CONCOM agrees, along with the town manager, um, just to go in uh, and renew our request to MWRA when we originally started doing this, myself and Clarissa Rowe said, well, this is just our first, you know, 20 year plan. We can put that out for the, you know, 40 or 50 year plan. And we're like 30 years in. So, yeah. um, and they have eliminated some, right. but I'd like to see them all. Um, it's just a wish. So thank you for letting me, you are a, a captured captive audience, both of you, to hear my little diatribe on that. Um, any further questions or comments? If not, and my sincere thanks. Uh, motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Caro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, we now have an appointment to the Equal Opportunity Advisory Committee, Nora Morantz. Madam Chair, uh, Ms. Morantz, let me know she wouldn't be able to be here tonight, but both Karen Malloy and myself would ask if the board would consider, <coughs> excuse me, appointing her, but having her appear at a future board meeting. I'm fine. Is there a motion? So yeah, uh, By Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn, um, to Mr. Carroll. What? Uh, uh, to, to, um, to uh, a, approve the appointment uh, with the request that uh, uh, Ms. Moretz uh, appeared and um, her earliest convenience before us. Okay, any questions or comments from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye, aye. aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now have the LGBTQIA Rainbow Commission appointment, Ari Lee. If I said that correctly, please let me know. <laughs> Yes, my name is Ari Lee. I use they, them pronouns, and I live at 104 Thorndike Street in Arlington. Thank you. Would you want to give just a little brief um, what you want to bring to the committee and any relevant experience or something else? I'm not saying you have to speak to either of those. Absolutely. I've been presenting on topics relevant to the queer community for eight years now, um, since I first came out as transgender and was the only openly transgender person at my college campus. Um, as I've come into Arlington, and I've been here for a couple of years, I've learned that Arlington has a really strong sense of wanting to identify as a welcoming community and sometimes struggles with the work of that because that welcoming identity is so strong. Um, and so I've been particularly focused on workshops lately about how to build diverse communities by leaning into discomfort, by leaning into the sense of I'm making a mistake and that is hard and these topics are difficult. And so I would like to bring that conversation to the town. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Kuro? Move approval. Is there second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Um, any questions or comments, Mr. Dunn? Uh, I, those workshops sound interesting. I'm really, I, I, I look forward to them. I'm, I, I'm the liaison to the LBGTQIA uh, committee. I don't attend all that many meetings, but I check in with the chair and stuff like that. And uh, I'm so proud of the progress we've made with that group over the last couple of years. So thank you for helping us out. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you all in the future. Uh, agenda item 15 for approval, transfer of all alcohol package store license, Giles Wine and Spirits, 137 Mass Ave. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Yep. So I am going to step out and recuse myself from this matter. I have represented the transfer or Mr. Galvin, who currently owns the liquor store in unrelated matters in the past and currently, so I'll step out. And I would just ask that the minutes reflect um, Mr. Hurd's statement and um, recusal in leaving the chambers, I guess we call this. And that's nothing untoward, it's just. <laughs> Okay. Good evening, Madam Chair, <coughs> members of the board. My name is Attorney Tom Truax. I'm from Salem, Massachusetts. To my right is Anico Biswes. He is the director of the corporation. 
He is also the proposed license manager. And to my right, excuse me, to my left is Mr. Vino um, Zavari. He's the president of the corporation. He's also the 100% shareholder of the corporation. Um, as, as indicated, the proposed transferee is Roshani One Enterprises, Inc. Um, the underlying transaction is fairly straightforward as is set forth in the purchase and sale agreement. Um, there is financing involved in it with Rockland Trust Company and they have asked that they, um, as part of their collateral that they have a pledge of the license and the inventory. As for experience, um, Mr. Zavari comes before you. He has ownership interests in two package stores, one in Lowell and one in East Bridgewater. Um, I believe that's uh, about four or five years worth of experience there. He's only worked part-time because his main um, uh, job is up here in Linfield at another store. But he's worked there and has uh, worked in the uh, beer and wine um, segment of that uh, package store for the past, uh, since 2015. And as to Mr. Biswas, he comes before you with approximately seven years of experience as working as a, uh, uh, as a clerk at uh, 7-Eleven and um, Tedeschi's, both of which had package store licenses and both of which, you know, he and I have talked extensively about the carding requirements. 7-Eleven um, is pretty uh, strict about carding requirements and they have a little course that they give to all their employees before they become employed by the store. Um, granted, that was several years ago. As I always tell my clients, when it's a new uh, store, I like to have them go through a formal training period. Um, the training per uh, program that I prefer is the uh, package store, Mass Package Store Owners Association. It's an in-person training session. TIPS doesn't have an in-person training session. So this is an in-person training session. Um, I've checked their website. They're typically a fall and, and spring training sessions. They haven't put out the dates yet. As you can look at their website, they'll be in the beginning of October. Usually the closest one is in Marlboro. It's a three-hour in-person and it's very detailed. I know Mr. Biswas has already told me all the things that he's heard in his training um, through 7-Eleven, but this will be more of a refresher course from him and a new course for Mr. Uh, um, Zavari, even though he, he understands all the requirements. Um, as to some of the questions I know you've asked before, and um, we've I discussed with my clients, I, I do a lot of this. So my, th my feeling is that you card everyone for 45. So if they look 45, you card them no matter what. And at the beginning, I usually rec or ask them, because you're, you don't know your, your, uh, your clientele as mm -hmm. well, I like to have them, um, I have always advise them, card everyone, at least for a few months until you get to know your clientele better, and then you can go to the 45. I don't believe there's a card scanning machine in there. Um, I don't think there's many issues at that store. Um, I've been to the store, I've looked at the store, it's, it's a nicely kept store. Um, and um, I believe they're gonna be retaining the two employees that are there. So I think between his seven years, his four years, and the employees that are there, I think, and the BAT training program, um, I think this will be in good hands when they change ownership, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kiro. Thank you. I, I think, the, and if you answered this already, I, I apologize. Um, any incidents at any of the uh, other locations where- no, you, I've, asked, have, I've asked both, and they're clean. Mr. DeCourcy? In this, we had a memo that was dated the middle of August, and it, it, uh, it looks like the transfer is going to take place in September. Is that still the, the well, plan I'm, pending I'm, the... I'm going on vacation next week, so I won't be back till the 20th. So typically with the ABC, you're talking a four- to six-week turnaround anyways. Okay. Um, they're a little quicker in the fall than they are in the summer, but um, we're probably looking some toward, somewhere towards the end of uh, October, I okay. would imagine. Okay, thank you. Mr. Dunn? Yeah. Um, so you probably heard the question I asked, or probably more, well, we'll do these both ways. I, I made a talk, I talked with the previous uh, liquor license about uh, the, trick, the, the time when a new employee starts is the time that we most often find uh, the experience. And uh, they had already talked a little bit about their training, but I guess so I'll turn this into a question and say, uh, so for new employees, um, presumably you can't wait for the training that you're doing because it's only twice a year. What sort of training program will you put in place for new employees going forward? I don't think there's going to, I mean, I, I can just say I know that what the store, what they're planning on doing. I don't think there's going to be any new employees. If there are new employees that come up, come up down the, the road at some point in time, um, as I said, the, the in-person training is tough to get. So um, the, there is a tip, there is the online course you can do. So as at least a stopgap measure, there's, there's the online course. But talking to these two guys, they, they seem to know what they're doing. And I think they can give them a good, pretty good uh, um, um, you know, discussion as to what they should be doing. But the tips would have to be a stopgap. As I said, 
there is another one. It's, it's uh, by Macarano, Marcano, um, but he's really rare that you can get him because some of the towns do require an in-person training. So there's a couple out, and I think Framingham, maybe Westboro, um, but he's a tough one to get. That's why the, uh, the BATS training, which is in the fall and in the spring, uh, hopefully that would cover any of those areas, and the TIPS online course would have to cover anything in between until we can get an in-person training. So would, did that include a commitment for TIPS training or better for all employees before they make a sale? Well, TIPS, I would say definitely, no matter what. Okay. Um, but do they for say new, that? These people are going to be <laughs> BATS trained beginning from day I one. Understand. So I understand. I get, I get, so I'll repeat, like, so our experience hasn't been, the problem isn't when the store first opens. The store, the problem is in the second year or the third year or the fourth year when there is employee turnover. Right. Employees, great employees turn over yep. eventually. Right. Uh, so is there a commitment in there? Yes. Okay. There'll be tips trained no matter what. And it's based on the schedule, we'll get the batch training in as soon as we can. Thank you. And would either of you two gentlemen just um, like to address the board on any of these issues or um, speak to your experience? I mean, you Even if you repeat something that's been said because your, right. your attorney says you, has said yes to everything and we just like to make sure. Yes, my name is Vinod Javeri and I have a store and a couple store in Linfield. I running last 14 years. Plus I have a store in East Bridgewater in Lowell which is I manage, I go three times or twice a week. So I have experience for the last 14 years. Okay. Did you want to say anything? Sorry. My name is Anukul Biswas. So I'm living here like 14 years. I'm working convenience store, package store, 14 years. So Excuse me one second. Can you guys please take the conversations outside? I, I'm just about deaf in this ear, and, and that doesn't um, amplify. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's okay. So I'm working a um, full-time job, um, all package store and grocery store, convenience store, 7-Eleven, Ted Ski, some convenience, you know. So I have experience for the, running the business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I do appreciate, because uh, I've never heard of the in-service uh, training that you cited, and that's some cities and towns. Uh, yeah, but, um, that's something I'm certainly going to explore with my colleagues and um, the manager and town council in the future to... Uh, See if it's something we should could we could consider. I, I wrote down the Mass Package Store Training Association, Mr. Mercano and Frame. I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. Okay. If you want, Framing I can. Framingham, yeah. but, but that's yeah. months down the road. That, I, ju I just had never heard that before, and I thank Attorney Truax and his clients for making us aware. Um, any further questions or a motion? I move approval, subject to all conditions set forth. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Um, similar to, um, even though we previously postponed, um, an applicant for the all alcohol store, you have all departments reporting no objections. I just want to note and make sure, and I'm sure you've already shared this with your client, that under inspectional report section, under electrical, um, it says, again, it's conditional, and then it does speak to uh, when or if to notify the inspector of wires around some wiring issues, should that Come arise in the right. future. So as long as they're aware of that, and yeah, obviously you are, um, and it's similar to what Mr. Uh, Kiro has always said, subject to conditions um, as amended. Uh, if not, on a vote by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. I put John. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, 4 0 unanimous vote. Madam Thank Chair, you. just also the pledge. I'm not sure if you mentioned the pledge as well. The, the training. Transfer and the pledge, pledge of license. Oh, is that part of the motion? It is. It is. Oh, okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. I can't make motions unless I pass them, but no, it's subject to all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that for the record. I'm a stickler for you. that stuff. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we now have, uh, oh, can someone um, let our colleague know that he can come back in business? I think a lot of these folks were here for the last minute items. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And j make sure the minutes reflect that yeah, right before um, Citizens Open Forum, Mr. Hurd has returned to the meeting. 
Citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. I'd like to ask if anyone is here for a Citizens Open Forum on something that is not on the agenda. Uh, so if I call you and you're here for an agenda item, um, when we get to that, I'll call on you then. Uh, John Ward, are you here for something not on the agenda? I'm here for something that's not on the agenda. If you could come up to the microphone, just say your name and address, please, for the record. Thank you. My name is John Ward. I live at 4 Winslow Street, Arlington. For more than a year, I've carefully chronicled through photos and emails my efforts to purge the Arlington Housing Authority of the unacceptable and illegal practice of providing safe harbor to stolen shopping carts. In that time, I have been personally responsible for cajoling the five local merchants affected to retrieve more than $7,000 worth of stolen carts. I have contacted all five store managers, several district managers, several corporate offices, the town manager, the Arlington Police Department, the director and chairman of the board, the AHA, the district representative to the Massachusetts legislature, several echelons of authority with the Department of Housing and Community Development and the state attorney general's office. All have their ridiculous reasons for ignoring this problem, and I'm willing to share those reasons with anybody who's interested. These photos, right here, These photos show $1,000 in stolen shopping carts that were against the back wall of the Arlington Police Department for over three months. And at least $600 worth that are in the lobby of the 4 Winslow Street until this past week. Incidentally, these things all have gone since I brought a copy of this to the select board's office. So somebody mentioned these things to somebody because they all vanished this week after being there for over three months. Stolen shopping carts are most often associated with the homeless and those living on Skid Row. All the residents of AHA are entitled to dignified common areas that are devoid of the spoils of a thief. The stolen carts can be found willy-nilly throughout the buildings. While some AHA residents have a need for a cart to transport items to their apartments, the AHA has provided carts for that purpose. Many communities across the Commonwealth and indeed the entire U.S. have had to pass an ordinance that fines the merchants for failure to pick up reported stolen carts and a cost per cart if the town has to return the cart to the merchant. The Arlington Housing Authority is a taxpayer subsidized operation it should not be made to look like Skid Row providing safe harbor to stolen shopping carts. They are placed there by a thief, plain and simple. Once the carts leave the merchant's property, the Arlington Police Department should be obliged to recognize them as stolen, no matter who reports their location. And there's a reason why that doesn't happen now that I'd be glad to share with anyone interested. Any suggestion that the merchants offer these carts to AHA as a courtesy is nonsense. I'm asking this deliberative body to pass a resolution to require the reporting of any and all stolen shopping carts found on HA property or anywhere else to the Arlington Police Department. In turn, the Arlington Police Department will notify the merchants of the location. Okay, can you one more sentence and wrap yeah, it up? I've got three lines. Okay. Of the stolen carts and given 48 hours to read it, retrieve them or face the possibility, possibility of a monetary fine. The APD postured that only merchants can report these carts as stolen is a preeminent issue that must be dealt with. Thank, thank you very you much. And thank you for your time on this. Um, and you must have contacted some, the appropriate person because they're now gone, so I'm glad you did that. Um, next, uh, Jordan Weinstein. Weinstein? Yeah, I'm here to speak on time. Okay, Lynette Martin. And I'm Shailene Fokris. Robin Bergman. And I'm okay. Eric Pohl, Mo Mona Mandel, 
for Snyder. Eli Garzon. Gerzon. John Sanbon Matsu. Sanbon Matsu. Sorry, I apologize for not saying that correctly. R Raphael Schmidt. You're here for what? I'm sorry. What did he say? I couldn't understand. Agenda. Brain layer license. Oh, oh we you got it. We did that. Did, did you just come in? No. Oh, you, okay. If you want to come up to the microphone and just say your name and address for the record, I apologize. Okay. No, that's. Okay, sorry about just that. Don't sell past the close because you already got it. Yeah. <laughs> I already got it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, Thank you. Just briefly, three, four sentences, name and business address for the record, and one or two about your business or the license you're applying for. Yeah, my, uh, my name is Raphael Schmidt. I'm the owner of USA Excavating. I actually got a job here in Arlington that I need to get done. It's a utility work, water, sewer, and, and drainage. So I need a drain layer license so I can perform the work. Uh, the reason why I came in today actually is because they said you, know, you guys only have the meeting. Uh, I applied actually last month. They say you only have one meeting every month. And then basically if I don't get it today, then it's only next month. I already have a contract signed. So I came here. If you guys have any questions, I have uh, over 10 years with experience. I'm bonded with the city of Boston, city of Lean, uh, city of Reading. So I'm, I'm just trying to get a job done here in Lawrence, and that's all. Thank you. And we do in the summer only meet once a month, but... After that, it's every two weeks, if not more. But okay. uh, you're um, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Uh, all five board members voted, and it was unanimous approval. So I'm approved. Okay. So move Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Okay. So you're all set. Okay. Um, that was Mr. Schmidt, right? Yes. Uh, Tom Truax, he was the attorney. I assume that's what he was here for. I uh, can't read this. Um, from Linfield, Mass., Corza, Main Street, Linfield, Mass. That might have been the transfer the, uh, the, the last license. Okay, so yeah. we think that's done. Yeah. Um, Clarissa Rodriguez. I Laura Bergen. Virgin. Um, let's see this. Carrie Thiel. Uh, chair, members of the, the select board. Uh, my name is Carrie Teal. I'm grateful for uh, being able to speak before you today. One second. Excuse me, can you please take the conversation? I really can't hear very well, and I'm like just about deaf in this area. When I get to two different, like, at a wedding, I can't hear a thing, so. <laughs> sure. Uh, so I live at 11A Lakeview Street. I'm here personally today uh, to raise a concern uh, about Town Day, um, but just uh, to give some context, uh, I'm the co-founder and executive director of a nonprofit organization named Great 2K USA Worldwide. Uh, we are the largest opponent of commercial greyhound racing uh, globally. We brought the ballot question to phase out greyhound racing in Massachusetts. Uh, we recently, last November, won a ballot question in Florida, which will end greyhound racing in that state, close 12 dog tracks. We also, in the last 18 months, uh, successfully closed the only legal dog track in China. Uh, we're doing really cutting edge uh, work in the animal welfare field. Uh, I'm proud uh, to be a resident here. I'm proud that we're located here. Uh, when we, a decade ago, uh, moved our operation to the town, and we have six full-time employees, uh, our revenue last year was about 1.5 million, and we're growing significantly. Um, we chose Arlington in part because the town had such a great history on animal welfare issues. When our ballot question was, was on the ballot, you know, we won here in Arlington 6337, uh, the anti-trapping amendment a number of years back. Again, very large margin here in Arlington. Uh, so I... All, the, all of that is to say that I hope and expect that Arlington will be a place where animal welfare issues are looked at in a forward-looking way. Um, I recently learned just last week uh, that there's going to be a petting zoo at Town Day. Uh, this is not a crisis in terms of animal welfare. I'm not suggesting it is. Um, nonetheless, I have some pretty significant concerns. Uh, Marie uh, and Diane Welch, um, and uh, Ms. Ms. Sullivan at the, at the Board of Health have all been extremely gracious with their time over the past week. And, and I realize that raising a concern about Town Day days away is 
really not fair. And so I, I want to apologize to Town Day and the Town Day Committee for that. Uh, nonetheless, I have three concerns. First of all, uh, the company that has been uh, contracted with, a company called Animal Craze, uh, is not licensed or registered with the USDA. And to be clear, uh, animal exhibitors, uh, the, the legal designations, they are either licensed or they are registered. Uh, the maximum uh, license fee is $300. So this is not a burdensome uh, uh, hurdle. Um, I downloaded the complete list of licensees in Massachusetts. The animal craze is not on it. Their, their only competitor in the area is on it. Uh, petting zoos are one of the uh, uh, businesses that, that are, as far as I can tell, required to be licensed. Their website says they are USDA certified. I wasn't sure what that meant. I consulted a colleague of mine who's a national expert in this, and he told me there's no such thing as a USDA certified designation for a petting zoo. It does not exist. Okay, uh, if I could ask you one, one or two more sentences. Understood. Because we've um, got So my, you know, I view this as an animal welfare issue. Uh, I view this as a public health issue. Uh, my request would be today that the town uh, cancel this contract. Uh, absent that, uh, I would seek a dialogue uh, to bring a bylaw to regulate or n disallow uh, animal exhibits. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, next we, um, did we hear from Mike Hildegang? Conservation Commission, yes. Yeah, okay, so that one's done. Elizabeth Stray. Beth Mellifil? Pass. I'll call your name again in case you change your mind. <laughs> Kate Trangvada. Tanquata, sorry. Uh, David Leone. Carol. <laughs> Please come up to the microphone. And David Carol Le Band is here too. So. And Carol. Sorry. <laughs> My name. Uh, David Leone, I live at 67 Bartlett Avenue. And Carol Band, I'm at 57 Bartlett. And we're here to talk about the traffic on Bartlett Avenue. Um, we wanted to initially just request that they do a traffic study on Bartlett Avenue. Since uh, 2013, Whole Foods came in. Traffic has increased exponentially, combination of cut-throughs, and the traffic going to Whole Foods. And uh, the second thing is town day, because that's a little more pressing. The problem is it's a two-way street. Parking is allowed on both sides of the street. When you really get dense parking on both sides, two cars cannot pass each other. So you've constantly got this jockeying, which gets worse and worse. We spoke to some people, the uh, Traffic Advisory Committee, a bit seven years ago, about doing a study. Prior to hopefully. Right, and they said, you know, wait and let's see how bad it is, and it's gotten bad. Town Day is, effect frankly, a disaster because it is wall-to-wall -wall cars up and down, people are looking for parking spaces, and they're trying to go to Whole Foods. Uh, the solution, could be to eliminate parking on one side of the street, which we did at Porch Fest, and that worked pretty well. The other option is to make it one way for a day so that people could at least park and go to the festival, and, but it, you wouldn't have these standoffs. I mean, we had situations where we had to come... Cost, yeah. <laughs> just about. Uh, it, it's, pre it's pretty bad. There is no place to turn around when you've got two or three cars facing each other and they can't turn around, it gets pretty bad. So. Uh, we'd love to have a traffic study to look at this long term and do it properly. In the short term, we'd like to do something about town day so we don't have the kind of problems we've seen before. We have a handout. <laughs> I think they got the um, idea. I think because we can't t make a motion or yeah. take a vote on anything that's not on the agenda, if you want to uh, send an email to the select board's office with those two requests, we can... I, I mean, right now, town day is Saturday, and what we would have to do is have more time than days to... That'll be your request, okay? I'm not trying to be stickler. And then, oh, what, um, I'll say during Porch Fest, I, I did, we just called the police department some days before, and they said they could not do anything about it one way, but they would put up no parking... Mm -hmm. And that was done very quickly, and it was very effective, even if they did half a street. But we can't take any action tonight. Okay. 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 Um, I don't know if the manager, I, you know, Mr. Chapterlane, I don't... I, I would add that Mr. Leone wrote to me today as well, and I didn't have a chance to follow up today, but I, I'd be happy on the board's behalf to follow yeah. up on the requests and come back at a future meeting as necessary. It was a motion, I'd say, 
would refer to the manager and, and some other things, but it sounds like he's going to do that. So yeah. Okay. okay. So fine. The manager or someone from his office will get back to both Very good. of you on that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Louise Popkin. Twenty one. Okay. Um, anyone else here for a citizens open forum on an agenda on an item that's not on the agenda that would like to speak under citizens yeah. open forum? So that's 21, okay. Anyone else here not for agenda item 21 that would like to speak under Citizens Open Forum? If not, Citizens Open Forum is closed and my agenda has disappeared. <laughs> here it is, sorry. Because <laughs> we had to go back to eight. So I threw me off. Uh, next we have agenda item 16, presentation, food waste diversion. Um, I will let Charlotte and others explain what it is. Hi, thanks. Charlotte Milan, Recycling Coordinator of Public Works. Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. We're here to share with you um, uh, exciting expansion of food waste diversion, food scrap diversion really in Arlington. Uh, there's about 15 to 20% of food waste in our trash by weight. It's mostly water. And um, we love the idea of aiming for that, diverting that, trying to get that out of the waste stream. And there's a lot of precedent with this and a lot of activity going on around the state. So um, Arlington is keeping up with the leading edge. And we have um, uh, a food scrap drop-off pilot program that started a couple of years ago, very, very small. And we're going to be expanding that. It's called the Feed FIDO program. FIDO stands for Food Scrap Drop-Off. And uh, that's a no-cost, easy way for residents to come, and, uh, to, come to Public Works and, and um, try dropping off food scraps. We haven't been able to promote it, and we're not promoting it tonight um, because we're at capacity. So we're excited to be, uh, that the demand has shown that we should expand that program. And so we'll have a few more locations as well as expand the uh, capacity that we have at Public Works. That gives us a real chance to keep an eye on the program because it is unusual, but um, there are other communities expanding towards this as well. And um, there's a lot of uh, interest in curbside food scrap drop-off. Um, unfortunately, I'm not here today to let anybody know that that's going to happen the day after tomorrow. But it is popular, and it is um, something that people are willing to pay for. So the town of Arlington wants to really promote this. There are at least four companies doing business in Arlington, so the prices are coming down. Um, this is the container that is used by some <coughs> of the companies. Um, it's got a nice animal um, rodent-proof uh, lock here, and um, the way the system works is residents um, take a, have a container by their sink, empty their food waste into here. Usually it's, um, it can be lined with, can you hold this for a second? Oh, <laughs> lined with some Vanna kind of okay. decomposable bag that's approved for this use. Um, and when you're done with your food scraps every couple of days, um, you tie it up and put it in your bigger bin in your garage or outside. And um, this is the starter kit that we will be offering uh, to residents right now. This is um, marketed by a particular hauler, but we're going to put the town, uh, a version of the town seal um, on containers like this. We're hoping to give away 500 kits this fall. Um, pretty soon we'll have a, a press release that will explain how people can sign up for that. And we're hoping that these kits can be available in early October. So the kit would include a rolling cart. This has nice wheels. Um, some kind of collection bucket and a roll of bags to get people started. And once it becomes a habit, people who separate their food scraps and their trash really find it's actually very easy to do. And again, this is our best shot at, at picking one item in our food and our trash that has a real chance to reduce the weight and save town money. Um, and we're diverting these food scraps away from incineration, which doesn't make any sense since they're mostly water. Um, and towards either anaerobic digestion or uh, composting in, um, at farm locations outside of the urban areas. So, do you have anything to add? No. Any questions? Well, first, as my kids would say, I'll channel them. I call firsties on that one. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Great. Everyone will wait their turn. First come, first serve. Um, Mr. Du Mr. Hurd, I'm sorry. Just one quick. So, when the program rolls out in October, in residents pick up the kit, what do they do? They'll bring it to the 
a designated location? So there's two different parts of the program. I apologize if I was unclear. One is a drop-off program that's yeah. free to residents that's, uh, that will be expanding, and we'll let everyone know when that's available to sign up for. Right. This is um, encouraging a subscription service. So these companies all charge an annual or a monthly fee to pick up your food scraps. But what we're hoping to do is encourage it and put our stamp on the side and uh, provide the equipment, um, information, inspiration, um, and encouragement for people to experiment with this and, and see if they if it works for their household. And um, this way, when we you know make decisions going forward about our future programs, we'll know if food scraps is something that we should be considering institutionalizing more. Okay. Mr. Dunn? Um, so what's the range on the costs of the services? Like, I, I know there, you said there are several, but I mean, what? Like, 100 you know. to 150 a year. Okay. And um, is there, like, any broad restrictions about what kind of food, or is it literally, if, like, if I could eat it, I can throw it in there? That's largely the okay. restriction. In fact, um, people, you can include uh, soiled paper towels if they're food soiled, for example. Um, some are vegetarian, so some don't want meat products, but for the most part, the curbside programs can accommodate um, cheese, spoiled meat, things like that. Whereas our drop-off program, we have to keep that vegetarian because it's uh, located in the community. We want to make sure that we're reducing smells as much as possible, and um, it's just safer that way to keep that vegetarian. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, and, and we're participating in the drop-off program, and, and you do learn pretty quickly to, um, to, to move on to that. Just a question on the, on the curbside. Um, what, what's the frequency of the pickup, or what, what is it typically? Some of the early companies were offering an every other week option, but for the most part, I think they all pick up every week, okay. either, either on your trash day or there's one company that picks up on Fridays. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there a motion to approve, endorse? Someone wants to make a motion to approve the pilot program? That's a question, yeah. So moved. That's a right. motion second. by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. No, Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. Oh, did you? Mr. Okay. Seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Clearly, but I then apologize. I realized you could have been quiet. No, right? no, no, that's okay. Um, any further questions, comments? Um, thank you, Ms. Milan, Mr. Rademacher. And we do have the best DPW director. I know I was gushing a little bit about Owen O'Riordan, but you far rise above. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make that clear. And they're both very tall. Uh, okay, on a motion by Mr. Oh, yeah. uh, motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Agenda item 17, discussion and approval meet metering of spaces on Broadway, Franklin Street to Webster Street. Uh, Mr. Chapelain, you will turn it over to. I think we'll let Dan take the lead and I'll okay. jump in as necessary if that's okay with the board. Perfect. Hi. Uh, my name is Daniel Amstutz. I'm the Senior Transportation Planner uh, with the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, so this item about the metering on Broadway is actually connected to agenda item 19, but I'll, I'll talk about the meters first. Mm. Um, and so I'll just, I'll read this short section in, in the memo that was provided, and there was also a uh, map of the locations of the meters. I hope you were able to, to receive that and, and take a look at that. But the, the 2014 Arlington Center parking study recommended that parking meters be installed on Broadway between Franklin Street and Webster Street. And parking stalls were actually striped on Broadway. You can see where the uh, stripes have been placed between Webster Street and Franklin uh, in 2016. But the meters were actually uh, ended up being installed on Mass Ave between Academy Street and uh, Jason and Mill Street to just address some of the issues of turnover within that part of town or that part of Arlington Center. Um, Broadway still, however, experiences issues of parking, high parking utilization, possibly some people moving into that area because of the lack of metering that, that you know, on Broadway since there are no meters. Um, and also last summer there was a business owner who submitted a petition to the board with signatures from many other customers re requesting that the town address some parking issues that were occurring, uh, that are occurring in the area. And that petition was also included as an attachment. So there were some follow-up conversations between the petitioner uh, and the town manager and, and planning staff, uh, and they indicated that the installation of the meters would help address some of the issues of, of mainly turnover of high parking utilization. Um, 
there's also the 15, we would include, of course, the 15 minute grace period where you can press the button on the meter and get that extra 15 minutes um, to help the drop off and pick up traffic that's happening at one of the, um, of the children's center there right on that block. Um, so the funds for this purchase are gonna come from the existing parking meter revenues and we hope to install the new parking meters this fall uh, pending discussions with IPS, which is the meter vendor and DPW to ensure that we can install them in a timely manner. Um, so the way that this is connected to the other item, which is about Route 87, is that you can see on the map that the, the section, which is in front of 283 Broadway, would not be included in this metering. So it would be 19 meters that are installed total. I'm happy to we'll take any to, questions. Um, 19, or we can do it right after this. Um, myself and others have had conversations with the town manager. Okay. On this particular issue, I'm pleased we had a request, we had a petition, we went through the process. We're identifying where their funds would come from and it's in conformity with what we have currently existing. Um, and then when we get to 19, which I think I'll do that next yeah, with my, yeah, the manager sure. and my colleagues' permission. Uh, again, there were a lot of requests about that bus right there in the center by the plaza and um, the three meter spots on Broadway will be right from the corner uh, by playtime. Um, and it's really a much more, much safer, more suitable location. Um, I know uh, play, when we get to 19, I'll talk to 19. So first, um, I guess I'm, if there's a motion to approve agenda item, uh, meeting, metering of spaces on Broadway, Franklin Street to Webb Street by? Move approval. Mr. Hurd, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro. Um, any questions, comments? Anyone here from the center playtime? If not, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And now with my colleagues and the manager's permission, I'll go to agenda item 19. All right, thank you. To our senior transportation yes. planner. Thank you very much. Uh, so this refers to the Route 87 layover that currently occurs at Broadway Plaza, as we all know. Um, and for many, for much, for much time, we've known that this layover location has been an issue. It, uh, when the bus stops there, it tends to block traffic that's coming off of Broadway onto Mass Ave. It blocks a few parking spaces that are there. Um, often there's idling if the bus needs to um, layover for five to ten minutes or so. Then that can you know, be, is a disturbance to uh, people that are eating on the plaza or the businesses that are there. And so there have been a lot of efforts to try and find a different location for the layover, which um, as far as I know has been there for sort of in perpetuity. Um, we, there have been a couple of instances to try to figure out a, um, a location when working with the MBTA. Um, we've scouted probably a half dozen locations or, or so, and we had another sort of round working with the MBTA over this past summer. We walked to the field and looked at different locations, and we determined that the uh, and also had discussions with the town manager, with uh, planning staff, with um, the T and also local business owners and determined that that location, um, which is at 283 Broadway, which would be in front of, in front of playtime, um, would, be, would meet the needs of both the town and the MBTA. Um, so some of the considerations is that there's currently two unmetered parking spaces that are there, which is really the smallest amount of space that we can really uh, take up in order to move the layover. Um, the, the T has some new guidelines for bus stop uh, links and so on, and so uh, moving it to a new bus stop or new, to a new location requires it to be a, a longer bus stop as well. Um, we only impact one property owner, one business, and um, which is Playtime, and they actually already have their own uh, parking lot that is behind the building, um, but of course there would be spaces along Broadway, across the street, and next to next to this location. Um, maybe one of the larger concerns is that it is about 500 feet or a two minute walk or so from Broadway Plaza currently, uh, where the, the new layover location would be. And um, there's another project that we are working on with uh, repairing the sidewalks in Arlington Center. And so uh, once those sidewalks get repaired, that walk will be much easier and much uh, safer and more accessible. Uh, so we would propose to uh, not do the official layover relocation until that time. Um, and the, 
the spot is also good for um, if you're transferring to the 77 or the 79 or 350, you could still walk down Franklin Street to those stops that are at Franklin Street and Avon Place. Um, the, the old layover location or the current layover location would still be a bus stop, but it would be a pickup point only. So the, the layover would be a drop-off point only, and then the, the stop at Broadway Plaza would be pickup only. Um, there's also work that we're doing in, or that will, will be done in the center uh, in Broadway Plaza that will address the accessibility issues that are currently at that stop. There's, there's a very small sidewalk and lots of impediments um, for somebody with a mobility impairment in order to actually get on the bus at that point. But um, with it being just a traditional stop, then they will not have the idling issue that continues. And the, the MBTA can continue to run the bus at the same route that it currently does. Um, so, <clears throat> as I said, it will continue to run on the same route. Um, we have uh, the uh, economic development coordinator did go to Playtime to speak with the, um, with the employees there. The owner wasn't there, but she talked to them. She, she explained to them what was happening. Um, they seemed to understand, and she also left her card if the owner wanted to call and uh, communicate with us. So, um, and uh, I also had... It. Did the same thing, went into playtime, okay. didn't find the <laughs> owner, and had conversations with the manager on, on Friday. And mm -hmm. basically what I was told is, well, some people, we know some people like to park out there, but I know when I went there with my totter, toddlers as children and now going with my grandchildren as toddlers, I'm very old, um, I've always gone to the back parking lot. It's safer, and there is handicapped parking back there, and I've never been hard-pressed to find a spot. I think once I had to park... There was, in the parking lot, uh, there was a run on poster board, and I parked on Franklin Street. I didn't want, literally, that's what it was. Everyone had their, you get there, Adam, okay? You'll appreciate buying 20 of those poster boards, word of advice. Uh, but I, I, so I just want to say thank you for, for that effort um, in terms of that. But I know we've gotten many concerns about whether it's St. Agnes and Arlington Catholic kids going to school in the morning, which to me the concern is more the parents that are whipping through there I come up that side street and they want to get back on to work. It's not so much the buses, but the bus is an impediment um, and it's hard to see. Um, and I think this is a really great solution. But um, I'd like to leave it to one of my colleagues, Mr. Hurd. I'd just say briefly that I can't remember an agenda item that I was more excited <laughs> to approve <laughs> than what is before <laughs> us right now. And I think weekly I text Adam pictures of poorly parked layover 87 buses mm. so because I spent a lot of time in this area so I think this was a, a great move and uh, I think it's a long time coming we've been trying to find a new location for that for about five years so I'm excited to support it Can I take that as a motion to move to approve move approval by Mr. <laughs> Hurd seconded by a second Mr. Curo I share Mr. Hurd's excitement um, any questions or comments yeah. Mr. DeCorsi. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, just a couple of comments. I agree with Mr. Hurd. That location is, is absolutely awful. I've heard from people who have tried to have lunch in Broadway Plaza in the summer and the bus is idling and it just uh, creates a terrible experience. Now, I drove through the center on Saturday um, and I was aware of these uh, locations, but one, one of the things I, I noticed in, in Maybe one eighty-seven bus was running late, and another one came in. But there was actually a bus idling on the uh, center side of, of Broadway, almost where the no parking signs are for for the really to allow engine or ladder one to return to the fire station. But it did make me think when I saw the bus there. Was that one of the locations you may have looked at? Because I know the bus drivers. It's not like the bus is left vacant. The bus, the 87 bus returns to Arlington Center. It's probably there four or five minutes, 10 if there's no traffic before it goes out. But it's a no parking zone already. And I, and I know it's a potential conflict with the fire truck, but it's, it, it seems to me that it's so rare that it's, oh. just wondering if that was something that was looked into. So I'll, I'll, if, you, if you don't mind, we, sure, we, sure. we actually did an engineering study to determine whether or not we could safely have a bus queuing there and allow okay. for the proper turning radius, and we could not. Okay. We, for, we, for the fire truck? For the fire truck, okay. correct. Okay. And then the other thing, just on Broadway, the 87 bus doesn't run on Sundays. Right. Is there any way to have allow parking on Sundays in front of Playtime? Because Playtime's open, hmm. and the 87 bus 
is, is Monday through Saturday. It stops at eight o'clock on, mm. on, on every night. And it seems to me it's a shame to lose two spaces when it's not like the 77 bus where you know it's running every day. Um, in, you know, until the T changes that. I don't know if that's something that could be looked into that would allow parking on Sundays. I can talk to the, I can ask the T, it, you know, they discussed with us sort of the signage that would need to be in place to say that it is a layover location only. Um, it wouldn't be a pickup location, but just a drop off location. Um, I don't know of any precedents offhand of something like that. I imagine the MBTA would want to keep it, um, wouldn't want to make it confusing that you could park there only one day out of the week. Um, but I can bring it up with them and see what they think. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Carroll and then Mr. Hard. Yeah, well, first of all, congratulations. This has been, thank you. I'm sorry, I have to speak into the mic. This has been pretty intractable. Um, if I could have just latitude to ask one question, before I ask my question sure. on the bus, one question on the meters that I, I failed to ask. In what we approved, I noticed we had the 15 minute grace period. Are they two meter spots? Are they two hour uh, spots? Four hours. I believe it's four hours. Hour. Yeah. Four hours. Okay. Thank you. Um, on on the, the bus, is <clears throat> in retaining the, the uh, Broadway Plaza stop for, for getting on, is that just being retained because it's more convenient for um, folks at at Broadway Plaza, is that the reasoning for um, retaining that? Or does it have to do with a need to turn around at that spot? And the reason I ask is, is there any reason that the turnaround wouldn't be just right at Franklin Street and then back out Mass Ave? It, it runs on Broadway, not Mass back. Ave. Oh, it's gonna come yeah. back, that's right, that's right. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> we, we did look at a, uh, a possibility or a possible location of um, coming, turning left on Franklin and right on Mass Ave so that it would come out in front of the, the fire station on Mass Ave where there are, uh, where it is metered right now, but there's yeah. about eight spots and it would, so it, it would hit a lot more yeah. parking spaces there. Um, and then in order to keep it on the same route, it would have to turn onto Broadway, which is currently not legal. Right. And so, um, the other option, you know, we would have to go down Medford Street and then go down Warren, and that would be a whole, whole other okay. <laughs> challenge to do that. So, okay. Yep. You answered mm -hmm. my question. That's okay. fine. Thank you. Um, I'll set Mr. Chapter yes. On a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Agenda item 18. Uh, recommendations to address Pond Lane safety concerns. I'm sure that um, Mr. Amstutz, I know when we received the different requests um, around Pond Lane safety concerns, um, some were on the town public way mm. and some were on private land. So whichever way you choose to delineate that, um, I'm assuming you're probably going to speak to each and say which ones is town, if any recommendation, and which is private, which we... Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, so just some brief brief background or, or reminder, there was um, a resident, uh, Rebecca Drash, who lives on Lombard Terrace, um, came to a Transportation Advisory Committee meeting and then sent a um, letter or email to the select board to request some, uh, she had some concerns about the traffic safety on Pond Lane and specifically between a Wellington Street, where it turns into Pond Lane to the bikeway and the overpass uh, of Pond Lane there. Um, so that was referred to um, Department of Planning and Community Development, and so I went out and met with Mr. A uh, Jarash um, early on in the year to talk about what the concerns were. They were uh, related to um, speeding and um, a lot of different users that are using the road because mainly, again, that, that section um, that sort of winds through those residences and then it comes out onto the, the, the parking lot next to uh, Spy Pond Park. And um, there are people biking and walking and apparently somebody has chickens in a backyard there that sometimes get out onto the road. Um, and so we've got a lot of mixing um, happening and then there are some pavement markings and signage that are out there um, that say no parking on part of that section. Um, and, and this section happens to be a private way. 
the part that continues eastward towards Mass Ave between the bikeway bridge and Mass Ave is a public way. So part of the research and uh, sort of figuring out how to address this was, was also addressing the private way issue. Um, so I did go meet with her. Um, I also went out a, a few months later and did uh, some additional observations and took some measurements. Um, there, were, there, there is a lot of traffic that's happening down there. Um, there is, it is, can be used as a cut through between Pleasant Street and Mass Ave, although my observations were that it was not sort of excessively so. Um, there's no part, there's no sidewalks in part of the stretch, mainly in this, the private way between the Elks Lodge and uh, out to the, the parking lot and to the park. And so uh, I also looked at some of the crash data uh, that we have recently from uh, MassDOT and from the police department. Uh, the police department did not show any crashes that had occurred there over the last three years. Uh, there was a report of a, of a truck running into the bridge, into the, the bikeway overpass at one point, but they didn't find anything. They didn't find the truck or apparent damage to the overpass, so that was not included as part of this. But um, out of the, the seven crashes that I found between 2011 and 2014, um, many of them seem to be associated with vehicles running into parked vehicles or, were, or that were backing out of spaces in the parking lot or along um, near the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and much of the, it, it's very difficult to really speed through that section given there's a hairpin turn sort of right, right in the middle of it, uh, right before, if you're going eastward, right before the parking lot. Um, so there's also a question of, of replacing the speed bumps in front of the Boys and Girls Club, which as, uh, I've discussed this with the uh, legal department and uh, public works and police, and it's, we don't install speed bumps or replace speed bumps. They interfere with snow clearing operations. Um, I did identify a few um, improvements that could be made, um, which, uh, which are detailed in here, including some pedestrian warning signage in front of the Boys and Girls Club, which currently does not exist. There's, uh, we've been looking at other crosswalks around town and when you have parking directly in front of a crosswalk, right in the direction of travel, that is a huge impediment to sight distance and for being able to see somebody that's waiting in the crosswalk. So there's um, restricting that parking. And, and part of the reason why we can do some of these I'll we'll just ratchet, go back to the issue of the private way. Since we own, my understanding is we, simp we own property adjacent to the private way. We are part owners with that section of the private way. So we own the parking lot. We own the park, of course, right next to the, um, right next to or across from the Boys and Girls Club. So we can restrict parking on that side of the road. Um, the other, uh, there, there's a, poll that's missing, uh, I went back and looked at the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee reports that have been done for this over the last uh, 10 years or so. There have been two, one relating to the renovation of the tennis courts and then one relating um, to a question about the, the bridge. And so they had recommended installing some signage about it being a one lane bridge as a warning sign and one of those signs was missing on the, on the parking lot side. I'm not, um, I'm not sure why. Um, the other recommendations is to have some yield lines on the side closer to Mass Ave as you're approaching. If you're coming from Mass Ave and you're approaching the bridge, to have yield lines there and also uh, to look and see if there's a need to have a low clearance sign along the bridge. As there have been a couple of incidents with trucks, I did observe a truck go underneath the bridge that was, he must have, he must have done it before because it, uh, <laughs> It, it seemed very, very tight, but he, it was an oil <laughs> truck that was able to get through because it's, it's very low. It's probably so you go through like 10 this. feet or so. <laughs> uh, so, so those are my, my recommendations um, to do some, some traffic safety improvements that we can do, but in the section between the Boys and Girls Club and the parking lot for the park, that is a private way. The, Property owners that are adjacent to that are the owners of that way. They would need to do the pavement markings, signage. I made some suggestions of what that could be, but Mr. Ash would need to speak with those property owners to see if they could make those improvements. 
Thank you. Um, first, is there a motion to approve the recommendations for the, uh, the pond lane safety concerns by? So moved. Mr. So Carroll, moved. seconded moved. by Mr. Hurd. Uh, Second. Any questions? Mr. DeCourcy, yeah, if, if did I get it wrong? If, first of all, thank you for the I thorough did. memos. I did meant to say that on the uh, the other um, the issues on Broadway because it's it's been very helpful. Um, and the question on the yield to oncoming traffic recommendation, mm -hmm. that's on the Mass Ave side of, that's, that's for cars coming from Mass Ave down towards the bike path, is that correct? correct? Okay. And then the other question I had, and, and I've seen this happen a couple times, sometimes it happens with school buses where they don't realize that they're bringing student athletes to either Spy Pond for a baseball game or even for tennis, and they don't realize that they're not going to be able to maneuver past the Boys and Girls Club and get out to Mass Ave if it's a, if it's a full-length bus. Mm. Was there any thought about maybe putting a sign up at the top of Wellington Street, just a warning, because once you get down there, I've seen a bus have to actually back all the way up because it just it, it, it can't turn around. Um, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I hadn't thought of that or I didn't know that buses would necessarily it, it, it's very there. rare but yeah. it's it, it's going to happen <laughs> um it's possible i would have to look into that to see if um because that's pretty it's sort of a far distance from the actual location of right. the bridge so it's sort of hard to say where um it's appropriate to put that type of sign okay thank you sure. mr hard regarding the i drive down this road every day i think this bridge well Everyone that drives there knows it's a pain to get through. I think it's like down, Downing Square. We always call it controlled chaos. So, you know, people go slow and they are deliberate. At the risk of taking on, you know, hate mail on this, is there a place that they could put the boats on the other side of the bridge for the Arlington, Belmont um, crew. crew team? That would be suitable, safe, and secure, so that they wouldn't have to carry. Them is there the a location that would be feasible? I don't want to take away their space. You know, I, I, it's a limited time of the year, and you know, it's just a couple hours a day. But it does sometimes coincide with rush hour. Yeah. And when the boats go through, and the kid, and we have kids walking through, and cars trying to exasperated drivers that have been waiting trying to sneak through. That's when I see the, you know, the biggest concern in that particular area. Then as I drive through, the biggest safety concern that I see there is pedestrians walking from the boys club back to the parking lot. Because as you turn the way of the road, and I know that's the private way there, but I guess this would be a question for Doug. For on the private ways, there's still a sidewalk easement on these roads, correct? To some extent for the public to pass over. You're saying that with respect to the public's right to traverse the private way itself? Right. Yeah, so the private way, however it was laid out and approved by the select board, yeah. or if it was later than that, the board of survey, but in this case, I'm gonna safely guess that it was the select board in that capacity. However the layout is designed, that width has to be available for public to pass over. Now, private ways, if I understand the, correction, the question correctly, didn't necessarily include sidewalks or specific pedestrian uh, areas, and so it can be a challenge because they may have only been laid out as a roadway without um, the specific, go ahead. I guess what I'm trying to get at is as you go through there, it's very, I think there's some wood um, railroad ties on one side, and it's tight. And it, I think it's worth looking, if we can, if it's within our purview to do, to see if any of those obstructions block the public's right to pass through there. Because if there's a way, my biggest concern is children, is parents walking with their children. That the only place they can walk is right in the middle of the road. And if someone's not familiar with that particular road, they come around the corner quick and there might be three kids right in front of them and there's nowhere else for them to go to access the parking lot on the other side. If there's a way to put, get pedestrians through there more safely, I think that, that would be a huge improvement for that area. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Mr. Carroll? Uh, I just had a quick question. Uh, the the um, 
memo says on segments of Pond Lane that ha only have private abutters, the private property owners are responsible for maintenance of traffic control, pavement markings, and warning signage. But there are limits to what type of traffic control a um, resident on a private way can, can actually put in. I just wanted to make sure that we clarify that here. Yeah. That, that's correct. So part of the issue with speed bumps is things like snow removal. But the other part of the issue is that if they're not part of the approved layout, that's a modification to the grade uh, that was approved by the Board of Survey. Similarly, there are, I'm going to think of any, uh, the Uniform Traffic Control Design Regulation, MUTCD. Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Thanks, Dan. Uh, <laughs> so uh, there are requirements with respect to signage. That doesn't necessarily mean that that signage can be put up. It just means that it needs to be followed. And Corey uh, uh, from the police department um, and uh, I think Tim Feeney are also uh, pretty familiar with ways and what types of signage can be put up on private ways in terms of from that, from complying with that perspective. It just doesn't necessarily require select board approval right. to put up a sign that says, you know, dangerous intersection or something like that if it's on a private way. But the signage still has to comply in the terms MUTCD. of its, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, anyone else? If not, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Was that correct? Okay. Um, any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much for all that work. That's a lot of work you. you had to just talk about there. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. We now go to, if I'm missing anything, somebody catch me, agenda item 20, presentation, pathways celebration. And we have Adria Arch, Cecily Miller, and hopefully a cooperating laptop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the question. Yeah. Oh, so it is. It's working. Is it working? Yay. Great. Oh. A miracle. Well, anyway, we can start talking. Mm -hmm. I'm Adria Arch. Um, I am uh, chair of Arlington Public Art or the Arts the um, Public Art Commission Committee of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. And I'm Cecily Miller. I'm the curator for public art for the town of Arlington. Hi. So, so we're really here today um, just to give you a very quick overview of how well the summer has gone and some of the really exciting progress that, but that's not, that's not what Makes we're sense. showing you. And we were able to access the town's internet connection, which was really exciting. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to invite you and everyone who is watching tonight and everyone who's not watching tonight to um, celebrations that we're doing on the same weekend as Town Day. So after a wonderful day experiencing the best that Arlington has to offer at Town Day, we're encouraging people to come to our pop-up dance party hosted by the Arlington Service Station from 4 to 6 on Saturday. And then the next day, we'll be celebrating the public art couple of public art initiatives. So we can go to the next slide. Um, the commission launched something that they called Live Arts Arlington this summer to test out busking um, in areas, the busiest areas of town. And so they used the Broadway Plaza and Uncle Sam Plaza and um, programmed 12 different performances, usually solo or two people or small ensemble. Um, to bring music, dance, and visual art to public spaces in the cultural district to contribute to the town's economic, social, and cultural vitality. And they got great feedback from, it was, this was like staffed entirely by volunteers and put together by um, the Programs and Festivals Committee of the Commission. And um, they were amazing. They had these survey clipboards out and got a lot of really, really supportive feedback from people in the town. So next slide. The, uh, these are just a few photos. There was a puppet show, um, very well attended by families, wonderful um, Turkish, Turkish style dancer, jazz, a woman sketching portraits. Next slide. And then the culmination of these sort of live activities was a partnership with the Arlington 
uh, service station, which you might know the Chamber of Commerce um, gave an award for business of the year for the transformation of the station into basically Arlington's biggest piece of public art, right? This service station has become this giant sculpture covered with polka dots and stripes and um, the owner, Abe, very generously cleared it out and we had two, um, two live bands, the School of Honk and the Bittersweet Band. The Bittersweet Band uh, founder was the drummer for the Village People. <laughs> so it was a really great time had by all. Which letter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so next slide. So we're planning to do it again. It was so it was so successful, and it just seemed like, well, let's try doing it on Town Day. See if we can get people who are you know uh, up on Mass Avenue to just come down the street. And there are three, going to be three performers, um, Dan Fox and his Foxtet. Dan runs a music school um, here in Arlington called Morningside Music School. And then the Odaiko Taiko Drummers. This is a Japanese traditional form, very dynamic. They also run a school, run a school in Arlington. So there's kind of this cool educational aspect to what they do. And then um, a visiting band that can... Uh, the founder is actually from the Dominican Republic, and they play a whole variety of Latin dance music. So that's a we're going to get people doing salsa and merengue and so on. So next slide. Um, we won't go through this. So I've sort of hit on those highlights. So next slide. I'm going to turn this right. over to Adria to talk about. So uh, a lot of people have seen the painted transformer boxes everywhere uh, throughout Arlington. We did. Um, 2014 and 2015, and then we skipped a couple of years. Um, and this past year, we inquired to local <coughs> business owners, especially in the center and the heights, if uh, there might be some businesses or organizations that might be willing to commission the uh, uh, transformer boxes that we'd like to do. And there were five that came forward, which was really exciting. So we're really grateful to um, Ellen Horn, LLC, and um, Custom Contracting, Kickstand Cafe, Arlington Center for the Arts, and uh, I'm forgetting the other two. Next slide there. Jen And, um, oh yeah, Jen Ren Chow, um, Martial, Arts, Martial Arts. Uh, I think I mentioned everybody. Yes, I think that's it. If I didn't, I apologize for that. But all five artists are local Arlington folks. And so we're really excited to see more art uh, all over the place while you're driving your car and uh, things that uh, children might really enjoy to see. I'm um, just showing that we here in Arlington really value creativity and uh, I think it sets a sort of way of thinking about uh, life and finding sort of joyful things in unexpected places. So and we're really grateful to have this business partnership and uh, community support this time to uh, actually pay for and sponsor these, these boxes. And, and so originally we were going to celebrate the art on the Minuteman, and then we thought, well, we'll expand the celebration, and people will get to meet and thank the artists who created these boxes. So at um, 3 o'clock, we'll have taiko drumming outside the kickstand cafe, as long as you give us permission to use that little bit of municipal plaza, town plaza. Um, and, uh, and honor and thank both the artists and the sponsors. So now we'll go to the next slide. And then we'll ask everyone to walk down the Minuteman um, looking out for bikes and see some of the artwork that's along the Minuteman uh, bikeway and make their way to Spy Pond Park where um, we'll have music and also a walking tour. So once again, to get to meet the artists and hear the ideas behind their pieces, most of these artists are very thoughtful and um, have drawn inspiration from a variety of sources. And it's really interesting to hear the stories of how they came up with their ideas. So next slide. And um, we'll have a musical performance by the Revolutionary Snake Ensemble, which is a group of jazz, very prominent, accomplished jazz musicians who are inspired by Mardi Gras and New Orleans, so it's good party music for a celebration. Um, so that's on Sunday from three to six. And next slide. Um, the Pathways Initiative has funded by grants from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, which is our state council for the arts, and also by the Arlington Cultural Council, which has now folded into the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture and is the grants committee of, of the commission. So next slide. And then we just want to, you know, let everybody know that Bikeway Haiku is 
writing again. Um, we're putting about 30 haikus down, starting at Uncle Sam Plaza and extending west into the heights. Um, again, it's temporary paint. In fact, the first set that we put down about a month ago are already pretty much faded out. Um, and we'll add a few more as the season progresses. Um, and this was really fun to to do the painting, the actual painting on the path, like people would be whizzing by and going, I love this, thank you. <laughs> um, and these guys stopped and uh, had their incredibly adorable little dog, so we had to take a picture of them with this um, poem that commemorates the things that dogs can enjoy along the bikeway. So, next slide. <laughs> so, one of the commission's huge accomplishments was developing this quite large and robust website, artsarlington.org. And so we encourage people in the town to go to artsarlington.org to get information about the schedule for this celebration and for other upcoming events. Any organization in Arlington or any organization that's doing programming in Arlington can post their arts and cultural events on the calendar of artsarlington.org. We want it to be the one-stop place that, so that people can find out what's going on in town if they want to do classes with their kids or go and see theater or hear music at a local restaurant. So um, this is a sort of two-way announcement. Both check it out for your own information and also if you organize things, please promote them through Arts Arlington. We asked for permission for the <laughs> plaza and um, also just to bag a couple of two adjacent parking meters. Okay, so is there a motion to receive and endorse the Pathway Celebration Art on the Bike Path presentation, as well as a motion to approve, Mr. Carroll? Um, I'll move, although I'm going to then have a question, so, <laughs> so I'll move approval. Motion, uh, motion to approve on Sunday, 915, at the public plaza and two adjacent public parking spots, permission between 3 p.m. and, and 6 p.m.? Three four. and four, actually, is all we need that public space for. And we got permission already from, from another hour just yeah. in case. There's no metering on Sundays, so if you just need the spaces marked. We though, need yeah. them so that the Odaiko drummers can yeah. zip in and park their cars. Okay, is it still three to four? Yeah. Okay. So. But the celebration is from three to six. That's where I got three. And and we got our permission from Parks and Recreation to use the Spy Pond Park, so oh, for the music down there. Okay, so moved by Mr. Kiro, seconded by. Second. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Carroll? Yeah, my, my question was, I'm just trying to get clarification about exactly which, which plaza it wasn't clear to me. So, yeah. you know, the Kickstand Bikeway, the Kickstand Cafe has yeah. some extra seating yeah. where Swan yeah. Place and Mass Avenue meet. I think it they own that. It has some little extra tables and chairs. I don't, I don't think we own that, so, yeah. Well, it's, they've given us permission, too. So we'll be... So it's private. We get everybody's... It was a contested land. We sort of we asked the planning department. They said it depends exactly where it is. Best to ask you guys just to be sure. Mr. Chapter. So it is. It's private property through which the bikeway right of way runs through. Ah. So it's not. Uh, it, there is. It's a little interesting piece of land. I, I don't think there's any harm in the board endorsing the usage of it. Okay. For this purpose. Okay. No problem. <laughs> That's where my dad would say, "Government, you're going to make it difficult." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing the right thing. Check all the spots and yeah, make sure you, 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 you get you. So, um, and, and we have asked the owners of the Kickstand Cafe, and of course, they sponsored the utility box that's right there, so they'll be participating in the, like, the little thank you and meet, meet and greet. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, I'll say there. Um, yeah, I, I just, um, I've been walking the bikeway every single day back and forth to, to, uh, to work, so I've really enjoyed your efforts, especially around the Fill the Gap. For those who don't know, Fill the Gap is the initiative in the Arlington Cultural District where um, we have an unusually large district, including the center and East Arlington, and in order to kind of fill in some of the cultural amenities and artistic amenities in between those two parts of town, there's been an aggressive effort to, to, to put up public art along the bikeway there. So I've, I've really, it makes, it makes my day, it makes, makes my, my morning. And I just had a question. Did you say that you just happened upon the, this group with the, with the dog in the picture? Yes. Did you? Yeah. Because I didn't I'll, just, I'll just tell you, I, the reason I'm surprised, I thought it was purposeful because the um, older daughter, uh, you'll be interested to know, was one of the best artists at Arlington High School and actually had a no, banner really? in the ACAC. Oh, no, 
I didn't. They didn't. Project, no, so. I didn't know that yeah, they didn't just say so. so. You know, Anushka, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> when I'm when I'm, I mean, I happen to be spray painting that day, which I usually do with you know a volunteer or two. But that day I was on my own. But it's always really great to be able to speak to people about their reaction to, to, to the work because most of the time, since our work is out there in public spaces, we don't necessarily hear from people unless we're really out there with a clipboard or you know, out there kind of while we're painting it. And, it, and they, were, they were really yeah. very supportive. She's a phenomenal artist. So track her down next time you have a transformer yeah, box. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Sign her up. Okay, um, any further questions or comments? On a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Okay, I got, it's all over the place. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. And, and the last thing that I'll say is a big thank you to, to you and to the town manager, Adam Chaplin, and the staff of the planning department, all of whom you know have, have been instrumental, all of you, in, in, in helping the commission to grow and consolidate and coordinate. And it's been a really impressive year where um, it's just a really impressive group and a really impressive year. So thank you. Well, we really have been watching and enjoying the ride and the efforts of yourself and the town employees and the manager for re-energizing, vitalizing. Um, I know when uh, years ago I talked to Lexington planning officials and how they um, got so many tourists in there and they said and they asked us how we got so many restaurants in Arlington but they said because tourists like to take pictures in front of things you know things that are colorful things they can interact with it doesn't necessarily have to be a statue of the Minuteman which I love the Minuteman so uh, and you'd be amazed you probably wouldn't be amazed you've probably seen it more than any of us have that I've actually seen people you know especially with the themed ones you know taking pictures out there especially younger kids, youngins that love to do selfies of everywhere, but um, and I think it, in whatever way you can appreciate it, it really um, helps to make the town more welcoming or as welcoming as, you know, sort of like a subliminal message, um, you know, that we care about you and we care about how we look and present ourselves, so we thank everybody you said, <laughs> and, and um, we're just along for the ride, and thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, have a good night. Uh, next we go to, does anyone need a break? Or should we go right to agenda item 21? Um, do you want a break? And that's, all right. All right. Um, I'll turn to our vice chair, Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so by law, uh, we as a select board can't get involved in personnel issues. And as a member of the select board, it's been a really uncomfortable time for me where an important dialogue has been happening but I don't have an appropriate way to participate it and uh, or lead the discussion because I, I can't because I can't get involved in the personnel issue. Uh, and the open letter from the town manager gave us an ad avenue, I think, to have a productive uh, conversation. And so I asked uh, the chair to put this item on the agenda. Uh, we're still not able to be involved in the personnel issue, which I think is pr inevitably going to lead to some awkwardness in this conversation because there are going to be some of our conversational threads that lead into dead ends, but I still think of the of the, what we can do tonight is, is, is worth it. Um, as a, I, it, I think it's important for me to include, before I talk about this, that my, my personally deplore the statements made by Lieutenant Pedrini. They're racist and harmful to the community and harmful to the reputation of the police force. And furthermore, they're contrary to the town's policies on race and inclusion. But my goal tonight isn't to dwell on that specifically. My goal is to endorse the town manager's open letter. Uh, I'm prepared to make a motion later if needed, but for now I just want to call out some of the key points that I think are important from the town manager's uh, uh, letter. Um, so one of the points is just that earlier this summer a petition was circulating that contained a number of demands and four out of the five of them were met by town action. Uh, the letter outlines an increase in police force training, including six different modules and courses that I think are really positive. Uh, the letter outlines a new working relationship with the League of, uh, National League of Cities. Uh, one of the results of that is going to be training for, uh, for race and equity to managers and supervisors across all town departments. And those of you who are regular attendees at our meeting know that uh, Adam has been working on this project for over a year, ever since he returned from an L NLC conference and heard some of the powerful stories of the work that they had been doing for race and equality in other uh, in cities, uh, particularly. Um, and also, it's worth noting that we're adding a new position in town government, the Coordinator of Diversity, Equality, and Conclusion. This position has also been in the work for many months and was approved by town uh, meeting this spring. 
Uh, the report also talks about ongoing work with the Consensus Building Institute known as CBI, and I look forward to reading and benefiting from what they have to say as well. Uh, I've received several emails in the last couple of days, by the way, that say they, that we should wait for the CBI before we talk any further. Um, I, th I, I note that the letter includes the CBI as a uh, process that needs to be continued, and, the, and, and so I really I don't see any conflict whatsoever. Uh, we can endorse this uh, letter, and we can receive the report and work with it, and uh, we're not uh, foreclosing, foreclosing one or the other. In the same vein, I've received a couple emails suggesting that a vote tonight was pr a premature attempt to close off this issue. And I just wanted to say we're not closing it off uh, if we endorse the town managers. And in fact, quite the opposite. We're endorsing the continuation of the work that the town has been doing on race inequality. Uh, we weren't done with race inequality when we created the Human Rights Commission in 1993, which was years before I moved into town. Uh, we weren't done when we created inclusionary zoning. We weren't done when we defined protected classes in town and established what it means to protect them. We weren't done when we added gender preference to that list of protected classes. The Human Rights Campaign issues a report card every year and we've successfully improved our score each year. And even if we get a perfect score next year, we still won't be done. We weren't done when we renamed the Board of Selectmen to be the Select Board, and we're not going to be done when we endorse the town manager tonight. Okay. I'll take that as a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Hurd. Um, I, what I will say is um, I, I thank my colleague for bringing this issue because it's sort of been percolating in, in many different ways. Um, there's been a lot of good discussion and, and, and good ideas and words formed around this and there's also been some unfortunately intended or unintended really negative consequences um, in terms of, uh, in my personal opinion, some of the websites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> God bless you, um, that really have, in my opinion, um, painted this town with an unfair fair brush. brush. Um, I am gonna, going to try to stick to what I've done since day one on the board. Both sides of the table have respect and civility, civility towards each other, uh, recognizing that this board cannot discuss or have a forum to talk about an, an employee issue, demotion, promotion, raise, anything like that, that um, I agree with my colleague, Mr. Dunn, that uh, if the rest of my colleagues agree that we should um, support and uh, approve the action steps, not just what have been taken, but will continue to be taken. And, and just be mindful that, you know, we really do have a lot of viewers that um, watch these meetings, which I'm always shocked by. I, tell them to watch Wheel of Fortune or something, this is a joke, but um, as it has been said to me by some of you and by others, words matter and words hurt a lot. Um, if you could kind of keep that in mind, because um, I can tell you, having spoken with uh, a large number of the men and women um, at the Arlington Police Department, who I have nothing but utmost respect for and always have, and we've heralded them out, um, for their initiatives, not just saying proactive, being proactive, including restorative justice, which I had to really be educated about in, in the beginning. Um, I can tell you whether a person or persons means to do this, um, the morale and the atmosphere that has been created around this issue, is really ugly and sad. Um, and I think most, if not all, don't intend to do that. I mean, I would hope that. So I'm gonna give everyone um, three minutes tonight to talk. Um, please bear in mind, we're here to talk about the action, the letter that the town manager put out to address this, and we're endorsing that, and whether you agree we should endorse his action plan or not, I'd be happy to hear that. So I'll call on the first speaker, which was? To another board member. Oh, I'm sorry, does anyone else on the board wanna speak now? Um, Mr. Kiro? Yeah. I. I do have a prepared statement. I hope it's not out of scope. I'm going to say that at the outset. It's not, it's not typical for me to, to, to uh, prepare, but I've done a lot of thought on this. Uh, <clears throat> so as my colleagues know, um, this past summer I went on an extended uh, religious pilgrimage with my daughter. And this was a time of spiritual retreat for most of my professional, personal, and civic concerns. 
uh, with the notable exception I asked my family to inform me of the debt exclusion override results. Yes. <laughs> um, we visited the uh, Cruz de Ferro way up on a Spanish mountaintop where for centuries millions of pilgrims have left stones that they carry from home and left behind as symbolic releases of their life's burdens. And I'm proud to say that that pile of stones now includes a piece of brick shrapnel from Arlington Center and another piece of the crumbling steps of Fusco House. Um, now these are burdens that I was able to leave behind, but there is one burden which, try as I might, I've, not, I've been unable to shed, and that's the great matter that's before us this evening. I admit that I was extremely uncomfortable uh, with the inclusion of this agenda item. And it's not because I have a problem with supporting the manager's efforts at public engagement and communication, because I don't. Uh, rather, I fear, as I think you rightly stated, Mr. Dunn, that we run the risk of sowing additional confusion about the limits of our authority. Nearly 12 years ago, after assuming elective office, I was confronted with the unenviable task of batting cleanup for a personnel mess that never should have been before me and my colleagues in the first place. And I have zero desire to repeat that experience. My message to constituents has been consistent. Personnel matters, with very few exceptions of the purview of the town manager and not of this board. Disregard for the separation of powers and political interference in personnel administration has a tendency to aggravate already bad situations and to make them worse. I know that there's a desire on the part of some residents to continue to debate the appropriateness of restorative justice for this matter but I'm afraid that that ship has sailed, and in any case, it's not this board's decision to make. That said, I've been very open about the fact that I was originally intrigued by and supportive of the idea of channeling Lieutenant Pedrini through the very process that he so ve vehemently denigrated as a means of demonstrating to him directly the worth of restorative justice. Having learned from our recent experience, though, I could not advocate for restorative justice for personal matter of this nature in the future. My abs observation is that restorative justice in a case like this sometimes weakens the privacy protect protections of traditional personnel proceedings while simultaneously creating unrealistic expectations about just how public the process can be. This is particularly problematic when there's not one discrete victim, rather a diversity of difficult to reach populations. And under these circumstances, it is nearly impossible to envision a condition of universally acknowledged closure. It's a Herculean task to navigate so many challenges. Now, <clears throat> I've struggled with my emotions and I keep returning to the same place. I'm, I'm angry. And anger is not, I don't anger easily, but I'm, I'm angry that a high-ranking officer of the Arlington Police Department saw fit to so sully the uniform of the APD by sounding racist dog whistles and making intemperate calls to violence and flouting the very policies and practices of this board, town meeting, other town leadership and residents, and his very own colleagues on the Arlington Police Department have done so much to promote. Now let's take a look at a few examples, starting with the suggestion that Central American refugees should be shot. Arlington is the home to the Guatemala Aid Fund, which partners with local houses of worship on humanitarian missions to Central America, and our town has an official sister city relationship with Teosinte El Salvador. This latter effort, which is supported by this board, sprang out of Arlingtonians' desire to assist victims of El Salvador's brutal civil war, many of whom became refugees. One of the founders was our recently departed friend, Judy Paradis, who even in death and in true Judy fashion, continues to inspire support for immigrant rights through her request for memorial donations to the advocacy organization, Centro Presente. The spirit of, this spirit of compassion led to tireless efforts by this board, working closely with police leadership, the town manager, um, uh, former Chief Ryan, Captain Curran, to pass the Trust Act resolution. We had one of the best attended warrant article history, hearings in our history, and we won an overwhelming vote of support from town meeting. The primary goal of the Trust Act resolution was to ensure that our immigrant community would not be afraid to contact law enforcement, and my fear is that Lieutenant Pedrini's call to violence undoes much of this work. Let's consider another faulty assumption in Lieutenant Pedrini's articles, that those who are concerned with police-involved deaths of men of color are a priori anti-police, and this is flat out wrong, and the facts on the ground in Arlington show this. Since Ferguson and other highly publicized national incidents, many of our churches have displayed Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter banners at the same time these very same religious communities have partnered with the Arlington Police Department, 
on efforts ranging from gun buyback programs to finding solutions to curb mass incarceration. When one of the banners was vandalized, the APD located the offenders and worked with the impacted church to pursue restorative justice. That church later rotated in a banner thanking the police for their work and keeping our community safe. Our police department has co-sponsored along with the diversity task group, this board, and 22 other community-based organizations heavily attended community conversations around unconscious bias. As the manager's letter details, a continuing series of internal police department trainings relating to bias has also been scheduled. Now one area of training not mentioned in the manager's letter and which I consider extremely important is de-escalation training. I was extremely disturbed that Lieutenant Pedrini railed in his columns against de-escalation, although his published a policy asserts a change of heart. Members of the board will recall that we were invited two years ago to observe de-escalation training that was made available to the police department by Sheriff Katusian and which was coordinated by Officer Hogan. This was one of the most impactful experiences of my seven and a half years on this board. Video simulations were used to train officers to make snap decisions to lower the temperature of tense situations with verbal commands where possible, employing lethal force only when necessary. I consider de-escalation de training and our continued use of a police department clinician to assist individuals' mental health and substance abuse challenges to be two of our most effective tools for keeping both our community and our police safe. Because let's make no mistake about it. It's a dangerous world out there, and this chapter in our town's history has unfortunately triggered many people's worst fears. For some people, these fears are very real. Despite continual assurances and the fact that we on this board know that our community is overwhelmingly well served by the women and men of the Arlington Police Department. To make matters worse, reactions and perceptions of individuals engaged in our recent conversations have been influenced by our national narrative. For example, we meet here mere weeks after a shooter in El Paso targeted Latino victims. We saw the MPD, y, NYPD officer who killed Eric Garner released from duty for using excessive force. And last month, the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences published research estimating that black men and boys have a one in 1,000 chance of dying from police violence. To date this year, 623 people of all races have been shot and killed by police in the United States. During the same time, 85 officers around the country have suffered line of duty deaths, 33 of these by gunfire. Last month, we witnessed an eight-hour standoff in Philadelphia where an individual shot and wounded six officers. And around the time of Lieutenant Pedrini's columns, we saw two Massachusetts police officers killed. I know that these murders deeply affected law enforcement officials everywhere, and they hit very close to home for me, very close to home. I grew up in Weymouth, and I lived for a time on the very road where Sergeant Chesner and an innocent bystander were murdered. My wife graduated from high school in Yarmouth where Sergeant Gannon served. We drive past the blue ribbons in his memory every time we visit her family. So I think you all get the point. I'm disgusted by Lieutenant Pedrini's columns because of their targeting of vulnerable communities, their lack of restraint, and their role in sparking a public backlash that has drained goodwill and put the hardworking women and men of the Arlington Police Department and of our professional management team under a microscope. This has divided our community, which brings me full circle to my pilgrimage. One of the women I met this summer was from South Africa. As a young journalist, she had covered Archbishop Desmond Tutu's weekly ecumenical gatherings to fight apartheid. She confided that she had become quite friendly with Tutu and that she had actually been invited to his home to celebrate his wedding anniversary the evening before our conversation. What does that have to do with us? Well, it made me think. <clears throat> After winning the Nobel Peace Prize, Desmond Tutu shared South Africa's truth and record chaired South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Committee and was charged with the superhuman task of helping the country to heal from the atrocities of its past. What we are dealing with in Arlington is bad, but it utterly and completely pales in comparison. If South Africa could move forward and find a path to civil solutions following decades of human rights abuses, I think that a town of 46,000 people can find a way to move forward too. De-escalation training for police officers is important but we can all exercise another form of de-escalation and turn down the volume just enough that we can truly hear one another. On the central question before us this evening, the manager is completely within bounds to share his thinking with the public regarding an issue of such community importance and to outline a timeline of events and actions. 
This is especially important given forceful counter-narratives that have challenged his motives, methods, and intentions. As I would expect, the town manager has accepted responsibility for key decisions in this matter. As to the letter itself, I would venture to guess that every single person in this room could highlight suggested areas for <coughs> addition, omission, alteration, or clarification. But I see no benefit in conducting a community copy editing session for a letter that has already been released, or even in focusing our vote on this one document, to be honest. Okay? So that said, I would, I, I would still like to highlight one of the letter's promises of a commitment by Lieutenant Pedrini to engage in further community dialogues in order to advance healing in the community. It's extraordinarily important to find a way for Lieutenant Pedrini to interact directly and in a safe environment with a broader cross-section of those expressing fear or upset so that he and they can get beyond the caricatures of one another, recognize each other's shared humidity, and maybe move the needle a little bit toward a better Arlington. So Madam Chair, with your indulgence, and I apologize, because of open meeting, I did not distribute this previously. I have a recommended multi-part vote. It's really much more akin to a resolution in, in form, if I might distribute it and, sure. and offer it as a, as a proposed substitute motion that's on the table. Sure. <clears throat> and with your indulgence, I'll, I'll read it while board members are absorbing it. It is voted that the Arlington Select Board rejects writings of Lieutenant Richard Pedrini and the Sentinel that assault human dignity and contravene the policies and decisions of the Arlington Select Board, Arlington Police Department, Arlington Town Meeting, and other applicable municipal authorities. And it is further voted that the Arlington Select Board affirms the town manager's legal authority to make personnel decisions and fitness for duty determinations in conjunction with responsible members of his management team and in conformance with applicable provisions of collective bargaining agreements and governing statutes, policies, and regulations. And it is further voted that the Arlington Select Board supports efforts by the town manager and Arlington Police Department to communicate and engage with the public to the greatest extent practicable and appropriate, utilizing a variety of means, including, without limitation, written communications, third-party mediation, and outreach initiatives like the Citizens Police Academy. And it is further voted that the Arlington Select Board advocates for staff training in areas including bias identification and mitigation and de-escalation. And it is further voted that the Arlington Select Board urges maximal effort to extend communication and engagement initiatives to all protected classes enumerated in Title II, Article 9, Section 2C of the Town Bylaws. And the training initiatives likewise address the discrete needs of said classes and it is further voted that the Arlington Select Board encourages all residents to avail themselves of engagement opportunities with the Arlington Police Department and other town authorities and to assist in making these known and available to marginalized populations. Um, okay, um, is there a second to that motion also? Second. Mr. and Mr. DeCourcy, if I may, could I ask I know it's a first read for everybody. Uh, town Council, if there's anything in here where we overstep our ch bounds or charge. Uh, Madam Chair, to my understanding, the uh, breadth of the, 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 the scope of the vote is to articulate the select board's affirmation of the existing structure of the town's um, distribution of authority under the Town Manager Act and further articulates um, a position with respect to what is a public and uh, sort of political matter on the general subject of concern, and then uh, proceeds to endorse a variety of positions uh, with respect to certain types of things uh, that the manager has referenced in his letter, uh, existing town bylaws, um, and advocates for um, the encouragement of both uh, town departments uh, and staff and local residents to engage each other in the w manner described herein <coughs> does not appear to me to be a directive uh, to the manager that he shall uh, make certain personnel decisions or shall direct the police department to engage in a specific course of conduct as much as it is a, a statement, much like town meetings resolutions, um, of a set of values held by the select board, if indeed the select board chooses to endorse this position. I think that's a fair characterization of it. I don't want to speak for Mr. Kuro, but 
Mm -hmm. Having received this and read it, I, I think that's how I would view it. Yes, yeah, Madam Chair, I will, I will, I will state that I, I shared this with Council to to uh, pacify him for that. It. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. It's very important. I'm I from, really, this is really, and I'm, I'm not. Sorry, I've been advised in the past not not to put the motions out. Ahead it of would time. be board information. Board information. Yeah. I apologize. On a very important issue, um, and I assume, Mr. Chapter Lane, that that would be the spirit and intent with which, if this. Um, motion were successful, as well as Dan's, that this board is not exerting any undue pressure or um, issuing any directive to you in the course of um, your duties as town manager. So just reading it now and hearing council's opinion, I, I think that is fair to say. Okay. Um, so for now, we have two motions on the table. I don't know if either of my other colleagues have questions, if I should call on members from the audience. I personally would like to hear from the members of the audience and then I'll just reserve comments. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to defer my comments until I hear from the public as well. Okay. Um, I'll just call everybody up. Um, please be respectful as we all are, you all are, and mindful uh, of the process of, of what the statements have been here tonight um, because I'd like to start healing a lot of the open wounds that everybody shares. Um, and, and not exacerbate them anymore because um, uh, I've really been upset and disheartened by the way Arlington, Massachusetts has been portrayed by a small minority throughout the nation, um, which is exact total opposite of what's here. So, um, and I'm going to have to stick to the three minutes. So, don't, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Uh, John Ward, he, was he here for? He was here for another. He's, okay. Just name and address for the record, please. Even though I just said your name, it's John. No, no, no. He, 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 he spoke earlier. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Jordan. Uh, hi. Good evening, Jordan Weinstein, uh, Lennon Road, Arlington. I'm a town meeting member, Precinct 21. Uh, first, I'd like to commend the leadership of the town for the work that's been done so far in attempting to resolve the harm done by the, in my opinion, the racist, xenophobic, and bigoted columns written by Lieutenant Padrini. Uh, however, I feel that more needs to be done, even more than uh, what uh, Joe has offered this evening. First, um, it's true that Lieutenant Padrini included and issued a public apology in his writings, but in self-characterizing his columns as simply, quote, careless and crude, unquote, he fell very short in his apology, in my opinion. What was missing was his acknowledgement, uh, which was made tonight, that his writings were actually racist, xenophobic, and in one case, encourage police to use violence against immigrants. His words have caused members of our community to feel unsafe, unprotected, and vulnerable, knowing that someone with those views is walking our streets armed and in a position of such authority over their lives. To begin with, I'd like to ask that members of the select board, in fact, do postpone any action tonight regarding the town uh, manager's open letter to the community and wait until all stakeholders have had a chance to review the pending report from the Consensus Building Institute, the CBI. I see no reason to, to move on this at this point. Further, I'd like to see the town do five things. Provide transparency on the already used restorative justice process uh, with involving a third-party legal counsel who can articulate what the town's options were at the time and are currently, and to conclusively advise the community of Arlington whether or not termination is or was an option for Lieutenant Pedrini, because we feel that there is some question about uh, the, the logic and the rationality. We, we can't discuss termination. You're really going okay. far afield. And well, just I please be respectful minutes. of the process. Second, to provide clarification on why the select board originally chose not to get involved in this personnel issue, but is now voting on endorsing a town manager letter without further engagement with the public stakeholders. Number three, explain why the town manager ignored reservations uh, expressed by former police chief Ryan who voiced them about pursuing restorative justice in this case, and the chief's belief that Pedrini would not have the ability to honestly express remorse. We don't think that he has. Disclose, number four, the full contents of Lieutenant Pedrini's 2002 restraining order case and the 2014 case brought to light by attorney Howard Friedman, 
as well as the financial costs the town incurred in settling those cases. And finally, to keep Lieutenant Pedrini on administrative assignment for the remainder of his contract. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Lynette Martin. Just name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Lynette Martin, 18 Eustace Street. Um, thank you for engaging the public on this issue. Rather than endorse this letter, among other things, we would urge the select board to endorse um, the following actions in order to reestablish trust with the community. And I have a list of them that I'll be submitting. I won't read them all to you, but the most important would be for Lieutenant Pedrini to remain on administrative assignment for the remainder of his contract to ensure the safety of the town and to reduce further trauma to citizens. Uh, additionally, um, I am one of the stakeholders referred to in the town manager's letter. Based on the concerns that have arisen due to this evening's vote, the CBI consultant called for a last minute conference call with a group of us in order to get some clarity. The results of this call leave me even more concerned. First of all, it should be noted that at the start of the process, many of the stakeholders were concerned about whether or not CBI was in fact an objective third party that could best represent racial justice issues. They had an existing relationship with Arlington. The consultant, Stacy is a resident, and it wasn't until recently that some of us put together that she is a town meeting member. Among the concerning items that came out of the conference call, was Stacy's concern regarding the term stakeholder, which she views as an overstatement, despite the fact that the town manager has repeatedly used that term four times in the letter that you're talking about endorsing. And uh, FOIA emails show he has responded to town meeting members telling them this situation is more or less being ameliorated by the group, which he refers to as a stakeholder group. The term stakeholders implies more weight when in fact a true group of stakeholders has yet to been compiled and requires a more involved process that more truly reflects harmed individuals stake in the issue. The meetings we have convened so far were just supposed to be the beginning of a conversation to assess if collaboration was possible. Stacy also advises the situation now has escalated way beyond what was originally envisioned and that there are very conflicting ideas from the town regarding what it wants and what is happening and what those she has talked with want. While she noted there are some places where we can collaborate, there are many places where it does not seem possible and at this point of escalation, she notes it may not even be possible or we may be past that point of collaboration. I would like to insert here that I strongly disagree with this assertion. The town manager and select board has yet to sit in on any of these sessions and it feels to us that the process has not even yet begun despite the fact that community members, many of them have the impression that it's been completed, as noted on various uh, social media posts. Stacy suggested that we request to enter into the record the actual contract the town has with CBI on this particular issue. Our concern is the town management and by extension, the select board are simply cherry picking a few low hanging fruit measures we have talked about that the petition has focused on while ignoring the rest of our concerns and our greater request for the town to develop a plan to restore trust. Instead, they are using the existence of this group in process while overstating its intention and role in order to sell a narrative that the town has done its due diligence to address the needs of those harmed or who continue to be concerned over this issue. It has not. This is an exact repeat of how they used an illegitimate, an illegitimate restorative justice process to make it seem like they properly handled Lieutenant Pedrini when in fact okay, there was no thank action. Thank you, thank you very much. I, does everybody here, you're beyond the three minutes. Do you wanna say one more sentence that yes. maybe doesn't slam a town employee? <sighs> Members of the community, as can be seen in numerous, uh, I would argue that the amount of risk we put the town in by opening ourselves up to litigation from any future arrest involving an immigrant, addict, person of color, or even the activist far outweighs the litigation risk from Lieutenant Pedrini. Please Thank, use you your power Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Lynette. I'm sorry. Please Freddie be respectful of the process. You're really not. That's not very respectful. I'm Shailene Pokris, 51 Crosby Street. Um, first, I want to thank the select board for engaging the public on this critical issue in, uh, rather than assuming that Mr. Chapdelaine's letter sufficiently addresses the concerns of this very diverse community. Before I begin, I, it's important to acknowledge the privilege that I personally possess as a white person in good physical and mental health with financial stability that brings me here before you tonight rather than perhaps someone from one of the marginalized communities who better represents the communities against which Officer, Officer Richard Fidrini has demonstrated himself to hold dangerous bias. I urge the select board to endorse the following actions and to not endorse anything tonight. Uh, we would like to see Lieutenant Pedrini remain on administrative leave um, 
until after the CBI report. Um, and this should not include any assignments that involve supervising children, such as the schools that my children go to, like the high school last blast. The town should formally request that Lieutenant Padrini step away. Um, you do recognize we can't do that, this board. This I, is the letter that you would endorse from Mr. Chap Chapdelaine. The town should only endorse things that children? request that Lieut Lieutenant Padrini step away from all MPA connections. As of, that's the Mass Police Association. As of today, his name and picture still appear on the MPA website under the executive board. This is despite an email dated March 2019 from then Chief Ryan, where he stated that Rick's MPA work has become a distraction to his duties at APD and the culture of the MPA is not reflective of the culture of the town of Arlington nor the APD. That is not likely to change any time in our lifetime. The last time I attended one of their meetings, they gave a standing ovation in response to an announcement of a fatal police shooting. As an element of any credible restorative justice contract, I think that he needs to step away from the MPA. His picture is on their website right now. You can bring it up right now. Fred Ryan continued, as I understand it, uh, Rick attended a patrol officer. This is at Arlington Police Department, and the officers gave him an award. And Fred Ryan says this is indicative of the harm that this can cause to the, this is an adverse impact on the credibility of the APD. So uh, I know the board can't do anything about this, but I would urge you to not endorse anything from Mr. Chapeldine that does not reflect this, that Padrini should not be involved with the MPA because Arlington can exert pressure on the officers that serve our community. In closing, I just wanna share that I, I have three children, they've all been educated in Arlington public schools. I've lived in Arlington almost half my life. I love this town. Um, my college age daughter is in her third year of studying criminal justice at the University of Maryland and I have learned a lot through her eyes. Um, my eyes have been open to the far reaching effects of police bias. Okay, thank the abuse you. Of you power. Please, and, everyone, um, stick to the I three think minute. You all will learn everything please. you can about the Padrini case. Please. And not just those who have the privilege please, of making their voices please. heard. Um, you know what? I'm not going to just keep repeating myself because I know you all understand it, and this is sort of a form of protest. But, Attorney Heim, could you just very briefly, um, in terms of the board directing the manager, who is an employee that we oversee, evaluate, hire, et cetera? Um, legally what we can and cannot direct the manager to do to any t particular town employee. And we're gonna hear it again and again, but I'd like to at least get it on the record. So as I understand the question, it's to just restate that the board of, the select board does not have the authority to make personnel decisions or direct personnel decisions to be made for those employees who are supervised by the town manager, which is most town employees. There are some exceptions, uh, which the board is aware of, but members of the police department um, are not subject to the board making a personnel decision with respect to hiring, firing, conditions of employment, et cetera. So I appreciate what the chair is saying because I understand all the comments that are being made by members of the public and the conviction with which they feel them but the board itself does not have a role in making a personnel decision of any kind, nor is it really able to discuss a personnel decision with respect to what should or shouldn't be done regarding discipline. Okay, thank you. And I just share that because I'm frustrated because I kind of do want to say something back, but then legally anybody here in the room tonight or even watching this could basically take my actions under question as it's being illegal. So, um, and, and also please be mindful of, it's okay? I was going to ask a question. No, it's not a back and forth. You get to make three minutes and that's it. Uh, please be mindful of, you know, we went through this about 15 years ago um, where citizens, what I think you're attempting to do and it harmed this town and divided it. It took us like 10 years to get back and nobody won. Oh, please sit down. Please sit down. What has more damage to our reputation? 
I'm sorry, that's not how this meeting is run. You're not being very respectful. I'm trying to be very respectful to you, but you at least need to respect the process and not yell out questions. Next is Robin Bergman. Madam Chairman, may, may yes. I say one thing? I, I do want to make clear what the select board is saying. Uh, folks can speak about what they want and say whatever they want with respect to the statement. I think the intent of what the chair is saying is only to understand that the select board does not have the ability to address some of the things. But if folks are free to say what they want in terms of what their perspective is, but the board is unable to do something about many of the uh, things that are being discussed. Thank you. Thank you for waiting. I'm Robin Bergman from 320 Park Avenue. Um, as an Arlington resident since 1980, a homeowner and one of the stakeholders interviewed by Stacy Smith, I ask you not to endorse this letter at this time by the town manager and not to declare the issue settled and to make it clear to the town, not just this meeting, that the issue is not finished. I also urge that Lieutenant Padrini remain on administrative assignment to ensure the safety of the town and for reduce further trauma to citizens. I also ask for the select board to grant the CBI stakeholders a closed door meeting to discuss this further. I also would like to read um, as much as I can um, a letter to the board from Lynette Culverhouse who's out of town and can't be here. I know I won't be able to finish it but I can give you a copy of it. To the select board members, I have been an Arlington resident since 1984 and was part of the stakeholder group convened by CBI to provide a report and recommendations to the town manager on how best to move forward and repair the damage caused by Padrini's hate-filled writing. The obvious presence within our police department of racism and hatred in itself is shocking but our leader's response to it has been passive and flawed and demonstrates an unwillingness to address the great harm done by it. We have always prided ourselves on being a progressive oasis, but we are far from a model of that. We are showing our white privilege and fragility and an opportunity to come together and heal is being lost. This is a moment in the history of our town where we can do some really meaningful individual and community work to overcome the overbearing yoke of racism and hate and become a more compassionate and united town. The damage we are doing to the future of the town by failing to address this is evidence of our elitism and will create more division and less safety for our children and future generations. I am calling on you now to show leadership and courage by first and foremost publicly labeling and denouncing the words of Padrini as racist and acknowledging that we have racist attitudes in our police force. People of color know this as well as their allies. By calling it what it is, we are not only letting the community know that we have their backs, but also informing other racists and haters in town that Arlington will not tolerate it. You have to take leadership on this because mistakes have been made and not to do so paves the way for further incidents of hatred, something we have already experienced. In addition, I ask you to exercise oversight and authority to get us to a place of civility and closure as the town manager has not done and for you not to assume responsibility for the process is nothing short of protectionism. Stacy Smith of CBI was invited to talk with some of the stakeholders in town and produce a report of recommendations, but Adam Chapdelaine's letter to the town was written before her report is even released and is therefore a slap in the face to all the stakeholders and a front to the huge piece of work done by Stacy Smith. Thank you, thank you. I'm letting everyone go three and a half minutes, just in case you're wondering, but, um, it, but could, you, could you give it to Mrs. Kropelka and then that will be in the record as well as we'll all have it. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, Eric Paul. And you can just raise that up. Cable will send me a little signal. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll start my three and a half minutes now. Pardon me? You'll start my three minutes now. I, I don't start it till you say your name and address. Awesome. I don't count that. Thank you. I might need them. My name's Eric Pohl. I live at 285 Massachusetts Avenue. 
like others here, I'm asking that the board um, not endorse the town manager's letter tonight. Um, rather than that, I, I ask that we all pay attention to and listen to the words that have been said tonight regarding the safety of the community and also sending a message to other racists and um, the, out there, whether they're in the force or not, um, that we keep Lieutenant, if he can't be terminated, keep Lieutenant Padrini on administrative assignment. I wanna talk about why I don't think you should endorse town manager's letter. Because according to a number of authorities and, and scholars in restorative justice, restorative justice wasn't completed here. Um, you can call it restorative justice, but that doesn't mean that it conforms to or aligns with a leading understanding of restorative justice in a number of ways. I could read here um, te from the text, but that would be very dry. Rather than doing that, I'm gonna say that Arlington has finally made itself a case study in another area. It's a case study according to multiple, at least two scholars in how not to do restorative justice. It's entering panel discussions and, um, and teaching um, material relating to how not to do restorative justice. That's the case study Arlington has accomplished. Um, instead of reading the dry text, I'd like to read from actual restorative justice participants as they wrote town manager. One, a restorative justice person who was trying to help write the apology for Padrini or add or edit to. It's really not my place to give additions or edits to a grown person who is apologizing. He is not the one that has had to live with and face whatever comes from it. Plus, if you, he incorporated my feedback, how sincere would it be? If it did not come from him, wouldn't I be pu putting words in his mouth? To me, this apology sounds weak compared to his original words that were so very strong and toxic. Diane, words do matter. His words are still damaging the trust of the community and um, immigrant communities. Um, our words, which you are so careful to curate, are in response to police threats to the community. Restored, finally, another participant said, restorative justice is supposed to be victim-centered. It is supposed to identify, and this was a restorative justice participant. Restorative justice is supposed to be victim-centered. It is supposed to identify who's been harmed and identify ways to he help heal these harms. So far, the process has failed the goal of healing harms and the, to the social fabric of Arlington. Um, it was, I think, an error to depart from the standard C4RJ process by not inviting all community members who participated in the opening circle to participate in the closing circle. I'm asking you not to endorse town manager's letter because part of it is patently false, according to even the restorative justice circle members themselves, that the circle has not been completed. Um, again, I'd prefer that we have a a different legacy in terms of restorative justice than the case study that we've provided as how not to apply restorative justice. You made it just to three and a half. And um, if anybody um, has any testimony they want to submit or they read tonight and they didn't think, you, please email it to the Board of Administrator, Mrs. Propelka. We can enter all that into the record. So if you don't get to say everything and you want, it's voluntary, you can um, give that to Mrs. Kropelka. Next I have... Mona Mandal, and you could just bring that down. Cable. Hi, uh, I'm Mona Mandel. I live in 14 Water Street, and I'm also a town meeting member. Um, thank you for engaging the public on this issue, and um, you know, even though you've taken the vote, you've made up your mind. I think it's important that the public also has a space. <laughs> To talk. We, we haven't taken no, any vote. We haven't yet. taken any vote. Okay. Um, the listeners, uh, two ears, one mouth. All right, I'm going to pause this because we interrupted you a little. Go ahead. Um, I, I wanted to register my concern with this leg board with endorsing this letter by the town manager. I would also like the board to take into consideration the concerns of the people from the petition. I'm one of the person who signed the petition with over 800 signatures and 20 organizations and 10% of the town meeting members. Um, 
right now we are you know the situation we are in it's it's a there's a we see a lot of hatred hate incidents and things like that coming up that's one of the reasons i ran for town meeting member and so this touches me in a different way than each one of you okay so i want to, you say words matter you're right words matter and so i this is not the this is not what i thought i was going to say so i would really like you to think about the chilling message that you're giving by endorsing this letter i would really ask you to consider and take into account some of the concerns that so many people have towards this issue i appreciated what joe said very much about some of the social justice issues and i connected to the some of the words he said but that he also said you know what that's all that i'm going to sign i think we should do this this is the right approach and i think that also sends a message to everyone who's here speaking about this issue um i would also like to um ask that the select board think about this decision and the town needs to focus on healing and coming together and it's important that you don't call the people who are raising these issues as divisive i think you keep referring to that as that and it's very hurtful as a person of color you may not share you it it that's just how it's coming out so i just wanted, i apologize then i i really i don't think you're as, responsible for the arlington racism racism and arlington racism posts and things like that so i apologize if so i relay that to you so i just want to um say that 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 comes off as that way so you as select board and town manager you need to be mindful of how you're dealing with this issue especially to the person of color in the community we are silent we are not saying anything but we are watching all the boards and it's terrifying being in this kind of situation if we don't have the support of our select board um so um okay. um so that's why right. i'm also Thank calling you. If you can just do one more sound you're at three and a half minutes I'm okay. you, people don't have to take the whole three but um, can, okay. can you say one more sentence and if you want to submit the rest to mrs. Kropelka yes, yes. Um, a quick one and uh, I, I would just really urge the select board to not endorse this letter and to give some of the consideration to some of the issue a little bit more like the CBI thank report you before. thank you Forrest Snyder Yes, hello, uh, Forrest Snyder, uh, 15 Allen Street here in Arlington. Um, I would urge that this uh, letter not be endorsed this evening and that um, it get more consideration be given. I would like to uh, submit to the, to the board and I guess to the secretary that um, there are some Facebook pages from uh, Lieutenant Pedrini that I'd like them to see. And I'm gonna read a prepared statement. Uh, a visit to Pedrini's uh, Facebook page recently re revealed the following. In addition to the likes that Pedrini gave to those spreading white supremacist messages, two pages stand out. And this is just uh, within the last uh, few weeks. One is called Proud Infidels, and the other is called Drug Enforcement Cops. Proud Infidels is an Islamic phobic reference. There can be no mistake as to the racist intentions of this page. It's not subtle. It contains graphics of a man bearing a gun with an American flag in front of his face and the tagline, I am the infidel your Allah warned you about. Other memes uh, refer to female members of the US House of Representatives as strippers and shame their attire. Other posts discuss immigrants as enemies for whom violence needs to be an option in handling if they do not respect the United States. The other page, uh, Drug Enforcement Cops, carries the insignia of a skull with a crack pipe and drug syringe instead of crossbones. This page is filled with YouTube videos, memes, and other clips that mock, degrade, and applaud violence on those who have substance abuse disorders. Okay, I would, just because we really can't try somebody who's not here, so I've let you go far afield on that, and the manager has heard it, so please, could you get to the vote and what you'd like us to do? 
I stated that at the beginning not to have you uh, support okay, this motion but we, this evening. I don't want any town employee saying I allowed him or her to be tried at this public hearing. I'm not trying anyone. I'm okay, simply, but could you please get back to this subject? Go ahead. I'm simply I'm reading. just trying to run a legal meeting. That's all. Okay, I appreciate that. I'm sorry. No, don't, don't, don't apologize. That's fine. Um, I'm also a court reporter. I'm going to add something to your time. That's why. So <laughs> I, I got a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. But go, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Even, well, let me just sum up. Even, even these passing glances tells us what these pages are about. They cannot be dismissed as a mistake or something that one did not understand. So I ask that um, you do not endorse this, this letter this evening and that further work be done. And I would just note that as a privileged white male, very well educated, um, never in trouble with the police, frankly, I am scared right now of what this police department is about, my safety in this community, if I'm gonna be targeted, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you for being so understanding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Eli Gerzon. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Ellie Gerzon. Ellie, I'm sorry. No problem. Um, my family first moved to Arlington in 1990. I uh, went to Bishop School, and I've lived here off and on as an adult. Um, thank you for engaging in this public process. Uh, I am asking you, rather than endorse this letter, among other things, we would urge the select board to endorse the following actions in order to reestablish trust with the community. One, Lieutenant Padrini should not get any detail work that exposes the public to risk. Lieutenant, two, Lieutenant Padrini should not qualify for overtime. Three, Lieutenant Padrini should disavow the words he wrote and name them as racist. The town should public four, the town should publish a public apology to Black Lives Matter, which has been maligned in multiple publications by Lieutenant Padrini. Town leadership should personally reach out to more than to the more than two dozen organizations signed onto, onto the petition to understand how we have harmed them. Uh, later on, I'm actually gonna read all of the organizations that have signed onto the petition. Uh, and I just wanna say, I've been to Black Lives Matter protests, I've been to other protests. I've organized protests. Protests have been an important part of our country since before we were a country, the Boston Tea Party, okay? It's an important part of our democracy. Lieutenant Badrini, the famous quote of let's meet violence with violence, he was talking about protesters and Black Lives Matter protesters especially. Black Lives Matter protesters are nonviolent. So he's talking about using violence against protesters who are nonviolent. That's directly threatening me, but of course is threatening people of color much more. And um, I just want to say that regardless of how you personally feel about this issue, it's not going away until we do more to address this injustice. <laughs> to illustrate that point, well that illustrated it well, but also to illustrate that point, I'm just going to read the list of the two dozen organizations that have signed on to our petition. ARCS Cluster, Arlington Cambridge Somerville Refugee Support Group, BDS Boston, a boycott divestment sanctions movement, Black and Pink, Boston Chapter, Black Lives Matter, Cambridge, Boston Center for Independent Living, Centro Presente, Cosecha, Massachusetts, Council on American Islamic Relations, aka CARE, Massachusetts branch, Digital Fourth, Restore the Fourth Boston, Disability Policy Consortium, Massachusetts, Dorchester People for Peace, Indivisible Mystic Valley, Jewish Voice for Peace, Boston, Massachusetts Peace Action, Mayantikva, a wellspring of hope, independent congregation, National Lawyers Guild, Massachusetts Chapter, Parish Committee, First Parish Unitarian Universalist of Arlington, Massachusetts, Racial Justice Coordinating Committee, First Parish Unitarian Universally, Universalist of Arlington, Massachusetts, Raising Luminaries, Progressive Massachusetts, Progressive Massachusetts, Arlington Chapter, Tenants for a Livable Arlington, the Alliance for Water Justice in Palestine. And I want to say, not speaking for those organizations, since this was not on the petition, but I believe, ultimately, Lieutenant Padrini needs to be fired or he needs to step down, and this town will not be safe, and it will not have a good reputation until that happens. Thank you. Thank you. 325. Uh, John's 
Sanbon Matsu, Sanbon Matsu. You say it right for me and with my apologies. John Sanbon Matsu. Sanbon Matsu. Took me many years to figure that out. <laughs> um, so I'm at 100 Varnum Street, and I, and I, I thank you for the hearing. I want to point out this is the first time, to my knowledge, in a, a, the year since this happened, that there's been this form. And of course, there's a lot of anger and frustration. And, and so part of our frustration after three hours is this is the first time in a year our voices are being heard on cable TV here. Okay, so that's the context. Um, I'm here because I'm extremely disappointed with the town's leadership. I'm sorry. I, you all seem like nice people, but to tell you the truth, I feel let down. Um, it was a mistake not to fire this man immediately. I could give you many examples of Brookline and other communities in our area and, and elsewhere where decisive Quick action was taken by town leadership to terminate an employee. I know you don't want to hear that, close your ears, but to terminate an employee who was engaged in hate speech. So that was a mistake. I'm sorry, Mr. Town Manager. Uh, in my opinion, it was a terrible mistake. He was then shunted into a, uh, a restorative justice process, which was really intended for marginalized communities and people who are powerless, not for cops. Okay? Um, I don't have time, given my three-minute limit, to go into the problems, the flaws with the restorative justice program, but many of us, and not just people in the room, but I've spoken to dozens of other people, and we've had meetings, and there are hundreds of other people who are upset in this town, uh, people who feel that the restorative justice process was uh, extremely uh, inadequate, if not a sham, and that the whole process from the beginning was exculpatory. That's why I'm urging you not to sign to approve this letter, because although on the one hand you're saying you can't get involved in personnel matters, it seems to me that by voting to endorse this, you're giving your good housekeeping seal of approval on, on the contents of that letter, which, as my colleagues have pointed out, contains omissions uh, and is not an adequate response to the kind of trauma that's uh, occurred in this community. Um, the uh, people have referred to uh, last uh, police chief Ryan's uh, email suggesting that he did not think, after years of knowing Officer Petrini, that his remorse would be sincere. How do we know that? A Freedom of Information Act request. There's been no transparency or accountability whatsoever, and I'm afraid that the same missteps that have plagued this from the beginning are being repeated here tonight. Um, I don't think, I think that there needs to be a change in town leadership, uh, to be honest, and I don't think that, um, you know, short of another public dialogue, I mean, maybe that's something you can all talk about in future, if not to talk about this as a personnel matter, as a crisis in our community that deserves public comment and more than we have here for uh, three minutes. Uh, I think that's all I wanted uh, to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Clarissa Rodriguez. Good evening. I'm Clarissa Rodriguez, 287 Mass Ave Arlington. I've lived here since 2014. Uh, I want to thank you for engaging the public on this issue, for continuing to keep uh, Lieutenant Pedrini on administrative assignment while working to determine the next steps, and also for commissioning the CBI, the outside consultant, to engage with concerned citizens. I ask that you not, endo uh, not endorse this letter tonight as many of the other speakers have asked, and that rather you consider these actions in order to reestablish trust with this community. Um, these, also rep these actions also represent my direct and personal concerns. Um, that Lieutenant Pedrini not be representing the town on any committees at this time. That he refrain from any outward facing activities where there's community engagement. This would include town day, coffee with a cop, the upcoming event at Robbins Farm Park and any school events, as well as um, the work of conducting interviews for and deciding who receives gun permits in this town, which um, both of which are happening at this time. And um, with regards to the town manager, it certainly would be more welcome uh, by many citizens of this town, and myself included, to thank petition organizers for bringing the concerns forward that we have rather than calling us divisive. It seems to me that all town leadership, the select board included, um, could make sure that they have educated themselves on all the details of the case. This includes the various articles, the Freedom of Information Act email files on this issue, 
and to be well versed in Lieutenant Pedrini's contract and the disciplinary actions and lawsuits that have been brought against him. The, it would be very helpful for the select board members, the town manager, and the acting chief of police to sign up for annual anti-bias and whiteness training such as the White Privilege Symposium happening next month in Cambridge as that has been recommended, um, as has been recommended to Adam and Julie by various people and to date we've not heard anything with regards to this recommendation. Um, finally, at the May Diversity Task Group meeting, the town manager and acting chief of police both labeled Lieutenant Pedrini's comments as racist, and making this a public statement would go a long way towards healing in this community. And I would like to cede any extra time I have to the next speaker. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Seven seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Laura Bergen? 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 Am I saying it wrong, Laura? Laura? Okay. Um, uh, next is Elizabeth Dre. Hi, good evening. Uh, Madam Chair, Board of Select, Town Manager, Town Legal Council. And I'm not sure what your title is. Board Administrator. <laughs> Thank you very much. I also, um, my name is Elizabeth Dre. I'm on 130 Jason Street. I've been a Arlington resident for 18 years. I'm also a healthcare advocate <coughs> for immigrants and refugees and the executive director of the Arlington Teosinte Sister City Project. I'm really not here to tell you what to do on personnel matters. I'm here more to tell you what I would like you to do as our town leadership. There's so many things I'd like to say, but what I'd like to focus on is what the town has not done. The town has spent so much energy and money and made so much noise to make sure that a racist police officer who will eventually get returned to the force doesn't come back too mad and disturb the Arlington Police Department. That has been your focus. Okay, I even heard it in uh, Mr. Dunn's comments that he was disturbed about how this had affected the Arlington Police Department. I heard that in your comments, Chairwoman Mahone, and I also take exception to you painting us as a small group that is painted the town in a, with an unfair brush and calling it ugly and sad. I think what we are doing is bringing this to the light. I, well, again, I apologize. That wasn't to you. It was to the people who put on Arlington Mass Racism Facebook sites. Those people are right here, so it is to us. Okay. You are painting well, us. Then I apologize because I don't think the town of Arlington and the entire p police force that the town of Arlington Mass should be identified as racist. Again, it's the Arlington Police I Department. Apologize. What about the people? Mm -hmm. Where is the conversation here about the harmed and vulnerable people? Silence. You have been silent. Nothing. Okay? All I hear about is the Arlington Police Department, and let's not make Lieutenant Padrini too pissed off so that when he comes back, he doesn't poison the rest of the department. What I am not hearing is any outreach to the community that's actually been harmed. No outreach to the immigrant population that we have here, no outreach to the LBGTQI plus population, to those suffering mental health issues, addiction, brown and black members of our community, nothing. You have been silent. You have been publicly silent. And that's inexcusable, you are our leaders. The first thing that this town should have done, every single one of you, is reached out to this community and said, I'm sorry that this has happened. Tell me, how has this affected you? How do you feel about this? What can I do to make you feel safe in your community, where you live, where you work? But none of that has happened. And I can't understand why. You are our leaders. You represent them. And I contrast this with the incredibly amazing response 
that the town had to the arson events um, at the Chabad Center for Jewish Living. Amazing town hall event. So many speakers up there, you all couldn't fit on the stage. There was singing and dancing, and that community was upheld and embraced and told, you are safe here. We are going to make every, do everything we can to make sure that you're safe. Senator Friedman said, Thank each you. day, I could only get 70 seconds more. You're at each four day, minutes. People fight harder. OK, well, let me get to this then. Okay, we have a lot more speakers, so could you just wrap um, it up in this? I sense? would say to this, you cannot choose who you lift up. You cannot choose who you embrace. You cannot choose whose human rights you respect. We are all citizens, and your silence is deafening to this community. Uh -huh. They hear it, and what they Thank hear you. is that you don't Thank care you. and that you value a police, racist police officer more than right. you value Thank them. Thank you, please. <laughs> um, next, she said pass. But if Beth wants to. I know this person said pass, but I just want to give her one more opportunity. Beth, are you still a pass? I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, Mary? No, everyone gets three minutes, and I've been nice. I'm not going to go back and forth. You've been going three and a half to four minutes, so. You all, owe, you all owe the process time, but I've given it back to you. Mary Fusoni. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, Mary Fusoni, 94 Grandview Road. I actually did not plan to speak. I was you know, convinced I ought to, and I still said no, but um, I'm feeling it right now. And uh, there are a couple of things that are particularly I'd like to, uh, to hold up. One is play on what Elizabeth was just saying in terms of, uh, I feel like the thing that's really been lacking is standing up and saying these were racist words. Now I felt I spent way too much time reading the Arlington list and um, there's one guy on there who's been consistently saying, point out the racist words, where are the racist words? And finally, some person that I don't know named Todd Bearson, I'd like to give him a shout out, said these this is why these words were racist. And I just felt like applauding this guy. I felt like this is what we need to be hearing from the town leaders. These words are racist, and this is why. It's true he never said, you know, specific, you know, race, whatever, you know. Some specific things that people will label as racist may not have been there, but they were clearly racist, and I would like the town to say that as with, a, you know, the leadership with the united voice. Secondly, I'm really very uh, stuck on the composition of the restorative justice process. I'm a member of First Parish. I was very um, in favor of that process, which involved finding members, finding people who really had been harmed by these words and having them in, th in four meetings with the offender. I learned from Adam's letter, and I was actually shocked to hear it. I thought that this restorative justice process was the same. But when I learned that, in fact, the first three circles were town officials, basically, mostly, I was like, that's, and it was only in the last meeting that included some of the harmed communities. I was, my, as my husband said when hearing this, he said, well, it sounds like the first three circles were circling the wagons. And um, yeah, that's what it seems like to me, too. I don't think this restorative justice process was a really authentic process. And finally, I just, uh, part of my passion around this I, comes from my own family. My daughter is a Colombian adoptee who was raised in this town. I've lived here since 1987. Um, but she recently married a six foot five son of Haitian immigrants, someone who could easily be mistaken by Lieutenant Pedrini and those others who feel as he does, whoever they may be, um, to be a threat. And he's the gentlest person on earth, but I can easily see him like driving a little over the speed limit, you know, through Arlington Center, maybe in some horrible situation where a police officer has been killed somewhere in the country. And, you know, I just feel like this person should never be on the, on the, unless he, you know, if he could somehow be made to really feel it and apologize, but 
I was in, in favor of the restorative justice process until I read the apology, and I'm like, this is this is nowhere as far as he, it's clear to me that he's not, you know, really understanding, you know, what the harm is that he's caused. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, next, we have Kate Trangvada. I'm saying it yeah. wrong. That's why I, I have nothing to add. I, it's all been said. Just name and address for the record. Sorry, Kate. Here we go. Kate Tranquata, 108 Park. I'm sorry. Tranquata, 108 Park Ave Extension. And here's a quote from Elie Wiesel. What hurts the victim most is not the cruelty of the oppressor, but the silence of the bystander. Something for us all to consider. Thank you, Kate. Um, no. I'll give you a hand because you unfortunately were last on the list. So if you hope you're still here, Louise Popkin. Louise isn't here. Okay. I I said I I finished with the list. I'm now going to go to anyone in the audience that's not on the list that hasn't spoken. Please come to the microphone and give your name and address for the record. Hi, my name's Kevin Heaton. I've been living in town for four years. I'm also a member of Boston Center for Independent Living. They're a disability organization that signed on to the petition um, that calls for uh, Petrini being kept on administrative duty. And it was partly, they signed on partly because of his language about people with mental illness and BCIL works with folks with mental and physical disabilities. So I'm asking you to please not uh, endorse the town manager's letter and just uh, keep saying that he should at least be kept on administrative duty. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Keaton. I appreciate you coming up. Uh, is there anyone else here who wasn't on the list that would like to speak? Please come to the microphone. And just name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Michael Jacoby Brown. I'm at 10 Brattle Terrace, and I'm a town meeting member from Precinct 17. Uh, the controversy regarding Officer Padrini's writing is a challenge for all of us in Arlington who care about accuracy, equity, and the treatment of people. When a police officer like Officer Pedrini compares women and children seeking asylum at the Mexican border to Japanese pilots who bomb Pearl Harbor and suggest we shoot these women and children, he not only shows an astounding lack of history, but a racist attitude toward people he has sworn to protect, not shoot. For this man to carry a gun and have the legal authority to use it is a problem for me. So I suggest as long as he's allowed on the force, he not be allowed on the street, certainly not doing any detail work. If he is directing traffic on Summer Street or Mill Street, near where I live, and a brown-skinned person drives by, a friend of mine, this person's life could be in danger. I also suggest that Arlington work with a group that better understand his words on the community. The Consensus Building Institute, and I don't know what they were paid, I'd like to know, I assume they were paid, has a good track record in many areas. I'm familiar with their founder, Larry Suskind. In fact, we worked together at our temple revising our meeting procedures. Uh, we both dislike Robert Rules of Order <laughs> and revise them. Uh, I won't say what my rabbi called Robert <laughs> Rules of Order. But, um, uh, the CBI, however, does not work with building multicultural and multiracial institutions. It's not an area of its expertise. I suggest, as an alternative, you contact either Larry Ellison, uh, an African-American police officer, president of MAMLEO, the Mass Association of Minority Police Officers, or work with uh, Visions, Inc., I know the town, I believe the town in the past, which is a specific organization that works building multiracial and multicultural organizations. 
Uh, it also does not guilt trip white people. Uh, full disclosure, I work part-time as a consultant to them, but if the town hired them, I wouldn't receive any compensation. Um, uh, basically, I called Officer Pedrini just to speak to him personally. He hasn't called me back, I believe, in trying to contact people and find out as much as I can, but those are my suggestions, and I appreciate your taking so time this time, and I know the hour is late. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else who would like to speak that hasn't? Name and address for the record. Ella Williams, 160 Mount Vernon Street. Um, I'll keep it short and just say that it's been made clear tonight over and over again why the town manager's letter is incorrect, faulty, and falls far short of a proper response. I call on each of you to not endorse the letter and at the very least table the vote and focus on responding and acting in the various ways that have been suggested and documented over and over again tonight. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, hi. my name is Jean Murkowski. I live on uh, Alpine Terrace. And um, I didn't prepare anything, but in listening to all these people speak and um, to hear some reactions to what people are saying, I just wanted to throw a few things out there. One is that I think we all understand the limits, the personnel limits of this board, um, but these things keep coming up, and I think perhaps they're directed directed at the town manager, okay, that's, they know you can't make these decisions, but he can at least hear what they have to say. And I was glad that uh, Joe brought up um, the, um, in South Africa, what was the, the board, the, um, the program? Truth and Reconciliation. Yes, the Truth and, Reconcilia <laughs> Truth and Reconciliation. There was an excellent movie about that that I just watched, and something very important there was that people got to speak, okay, so to say, um, this letter and endorsing this letter, um, we should be able to put this to bed. You know, if South Africa can deal with their things, then this letter should put things to bed. People need to be heard. And even if some things people are saying are inappropriate, it's, for this forum, it's clear that people have not been heard and really want to be heard. And um, I would ask you not to endorse this letter, and I thank you for your time and your service to the town. Thank you. Um, anyone else who hasn't spoken? My name is Rajiv Soneja, I live on 13 Mary Street. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to let me speak today. Uh, I just wanted to say I've been a resident of uh, Arlington for almost 14 years now. I'm an immigrant, uh, I grew up outside the country and I decided to make Arlington my home with my family. Um, what I read from the letters or the articles mentioned by Lieutenant Pedrini was chilling to me because it is evocative of what's happening uh, nationally, so to see that happen in our own town was absolutely shocking. I've involved myself in every activity in the community, volunteering, trying to make myself integrated into this community, and I see the response from the leadership in the town leaves me dumbfounded. So what I would appeal to you is to look at this case again. His writings mirror exactly what has been happening nationally. It's not coded language. It's a direct um, call to the worst in humanity. Um, I echo everything, uh, but I did not prepare to speak today, but I'm compelled to because I hear all the um, uh, other people speak. But I just would like to say that the, the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, and I want to um, reiterate what uh, the person before me said, they spent years listening to all the victims. We cannot get over this uh, or absolve this in a matter of uh, uh, a hearing for two hours. We should be able to do better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else? Okay, with that, um, Mr. Hurd. So I will try to be brief because I think a lot of the comments have been said. Um, Madam Chair, if I come to a point where I'm going beyond what we are charged with talking about, just let me know. One thing that came up a few times, I just want people to be clear on it. We put this on the agenda, but we have Citizens Open Forum just about every meeting. So every meeting we have, you can come and speak about whatever issue involving the town 
you want to, just like you've done here. To be honest, it's been just about every meeting since this happened, I've anticipated that some sort of, that this would, that we would hear from folks on both sides of this issue. And we welcome all the input. Um, I want to address one comment that I think might have just been a miss, misspeak, where someone had talked about the town manager calling the certain people that are again that are speaking here today divisive. I don't think I I think that was I'm not sure that he has ever said that, and I think I that think was. It was me. Maybe yeah, but I think someone had meant, oh. said it about the town manager. I think it was, someone just misspoke. But I just wanted to make sure we clearly pulled that out. We've, okay, this is where the board discusses now. We don't yell out from the audience. It's just civility. Okay. Mr. Hurd, I'm sorry. I apologize. We've talked about the, the, this has been talked about as well. I, again, don't want to dwell on things that we keep telling you. But just about everything that we have heard as far as, as suggestions as to how we, this board, should move forward are not within our charge as a board. There's a separation of powers. The town manager is charged with handling personnel issues, hiring, firing, disciplinary issues. It's not within our purview to tell the town manager how he should handle this sp specific matter. It's not in our purview to tell the town manager how he should handle other specific matters that he handles on a day-to-day -day -day basis. That being said, we are here to, to discuss and in, endorse, if the board so chooses, the letter that he had, he had put forth a few weeks ago. I did not read that letter to say that he thought that the process was over. I've heard that a few times here. I think this process is ongoing. Um, as far as the report that's forthcoming, I believe the letter says that we will wait to see with what the report says and we'll continue to evaluate the matter based on the re recommendations of the, of the CBI, yep. that once that comes out. So to the extent that our vote here should be stalled until that report comes out, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to talk about the specific letter that came out. The manager was put in a very difficult position, and this is where I'm going to just be brief and not talk the line. All right, I'm sorry. If you can't contain yourself, I'm going to have to ask you to step outside. You really need to respect the process, and you're not doing that. Please. I beg you. Please. They chose... Sorry, Mr. Hurd. In responding to this issue, the manager heard the community, heard the concerns, and collaboratively with other members of this community, not this board, but other members of this community chose the restorative justice process. Now looking back, I think uh, many people look at the process and there's always comments that could be made and there's always things that we are learning. This is not even, this is a, our first time through the restorative justice process in such a public nature. We are learning about the, the process and we can learn from this experience in order to use it if, it's ever, if a situation like this is ever presented again. And we can, we'll take the comments that, that come and I know the town manager has ta takes all the comments that he receives to heart and that can be used in the future to improve the process. I was just saying, I mean, those are my opinions. Um, but again, well, we are limited in the things that we can do on this particular issue because of the separation of powers. We are here to, to endorse that the town manager has used his good faith to, to address the concerns, I think, of, that the community has put forth here. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and, and, and thank you for coming tonight to, to express your, your, your views to, to the public. Um, this has been a very <coughs> painful, painful issue for the community. And um, you, you've heard from people. One thing I want to, before I get to both motions that are before the board, is just um, repeat that the, the last line of the town manager's letter, um, it, 
where we discuss is that, that finding a path to healing, and we, we truly need to find a path to healing uh, in the community. And I think the, for reasons I'm gonna discuss later, I, I personally cannot vote to endorse the letter this evening because it, it, I'm not doing it, to, it, it because I feel like we're at a stage where things are incomplete. It's not that I think the manager was well within his rights to put it out there, and I think at that time he did it. It was appropriate for him to lay out what his thinking was. However, for us, for me personally, um, to vote to endorse the letter, we're, we're, we're not there yet. Um, I, I think we'd be getting ahead of the process. And, and you know, a couple quotes from the letter. The major thing that still needs to be done by both the town and Lieutenant Padrini is further engagement with the community in order to both continue to repair the harm and rebuild trust in the Arlington Police Department. Um, there's then further reference to the CBI report, um, which I think is expected to be made available this month, which will guide next steps. Well, you don't know what the next steps are until you get the, until you get the report. And then later in the letter, the manager says additional steps are needed and will surely be coming to ensure that our town and all of its employees live up to the values and aspirations of respect, safety, inclusion, inclusion and justice for all Arlington residents. And this is the manager's words, but I think it's, it, it, it's important. I, I understand that we have more work to do and I am committed to doing it and I accept that from the manager. Um, I just don't think at this stage it's, it's, we haven't gotten involved in this process because of the separation. Um, and, and I think at this stage to come in and endorse the letter, we'd be endorsing everything in the letter and I just don't, I, I just don't think that's, that's something that we should be doing as a board. Now, one of the things that's, um, Mr. Kerr brought a resolution or, or, or a proposed a vote, it's basically a motion, motion before the board tonight. And unfortunately, um, in, and it's a good thing for open and transparent government, he gave it to us tonight. This is the first time all of us are seeing this. So I, I, I got this um, at the same time, you haven't even, the public hasn't even gotten it yet. Um, I think for, in, in the sentiments expressed in the proposed motion and, 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 and what Mr. Kiro said, I, I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, I think if we are gonna make a vote tonight, I could support Mr. Kiro's proposed vote um, with, with one change rather than saying that we affirm the town manager's authority. We're not really affirming it, we acknowledge his authority. So I did propose changing affirm to acknowledge, but um, I just feel you know, just so much pain out there for, for really destructive racist dialogue. Let's face it, let's call it what it is. Um, I think we, um, there's a lot more to do to the community. We'll look to the manager to, to do more. And as far as my colleagues are concerned, that's what I could support this evening. And I, I just want to um, state the purpose of um, putting this forth is because this has been sort of percolating and um, Mr. Hurd commented, we do have citizens open forum and I wasn't hearing anything in the public arena. So uh, when Mr. Dunn called and asked for an agenda item, and I always sat and work with the town manager to um, put on public agenda items. Um, it, it wasn't to be confrontational or it's we uh, I, personally myself I'm really saddened by some things that have been done by some people not saying in this room and I just see it getting worse and worse so this was sort of our proactive step when we were shocked no one was coming for citizens open forum um, so um, I, so I do want to uh, point that out to everybody and commend um, my colleague Mr. Dunn and and Adam Chapterlain to um, Mr. DeCourcy's remarks, um, and I'd be interested in, in what the rest of the board has to say. I know people are out there might be saying, oh, you're pulling that, we can't talk about a town employee issue. But we can with the town manager. And we charge him to take on the day-to-day -day responsibilities of anything that comes across his desk, whether it's something inspired from the community, a business, an employee, positive action, negative action. And when we review, re review him and evaluate him and renew his contract, um, to me that's a very powerful statement and endorsement in terms of um, our trust in him 
in doing his job. Um, I really think he's been exemplary, as he has on many other issues, in, in this issue in particular, in keeping us surprised. When we've been saying we haven't heard anything. I know he's met with several groups. Um, I know that um, as of last Friday, I, I'm, I'm, he's been, been told and I've been told there's a petition with thousands of signatures on it, and we haven't received it, and that's okay. Um, I know that from what the manager gave me um, after meeting with, um, I know of at least two meetings, that there may have been more, um, where people have these concerns that he took his time to sit down and listen to people. And I know when I spoke to him after both meetings, it was like, you know what, it was a really good conversation. Both sides heard each other. Um, there's five requests, basically, that they're making. Um, I'm committing to the four of the five, um, and that's what he outlined, and he also kept this board apprised of, you know, as this was going on, because we were waiting to see when it would appear before us. Um, and what I'm understanding, what our action would be here tonight, is to basically approve or disapprove of our town manager, the way he's um, dealt with this issue, the steps that he's proposing to take. I, I say, you know, either we endorse, approve, or whatever, in whatever format you want to do it, the manager has laid out a plan from these different um, personal meetings as well as emails and phone conversations, and he's put that, that out as a path that he wants to go down. I would say if there's anything we disagree with that needs to be added. Um, but to me, I, I, I don't want it to be construed that we're saying anything negative in the way that the town manager is performing his job. I think he's done exactly what um, we give him, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Um, and I don't know why anyone, with all due respect, you know, would have a problem evaluating the manager and how he handled the situation, whether we think he handled it appropriately or, or not. And, and, and I understand your point about this. I, I just would say, I had my feathers ruffled a little, um, and this is done on other things. You know, anything that's on the agenda, even like when we get here at quarter of seven, or you can call, anyone can call Marie. Someone did it tonight um, on a citizen open forum. It can just be before us that says, you know, item 14, because then we would have had a little more time to read it. Apologize, for especially that. I the was enormity of it. Attempting to conform very strictly to the open meeting law. Well, I let everybody on both sides of the mic and our table kind of stray up, up away from that because I felt like people needed to say what they wanted to. Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, thank you, Manager. And I just want to clarify by saying like that I don't disapprove of what the manager has done. I just think for us to vote, it's 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 not. The, the, the endorsement or what we're being asked to do is too broad at, at this time, but it is not. I, I think the manager has acted in, in, in good faith throughout this whole thing. I think he has acted in the best way he sees to, to, to move this forward. So it's not, don't take this as me saying I disapprove of what he did because I certainly don't, but it's just in terms of what, what our vote would be and where we are right now in the process. Um, I, I, I feel it's... It, 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 I just feel that that's not the path for, for us to take as a board. I just hope we take a vote. Yeah, no, I do too. To move forward. I, absolutely. Because by not doing that, I, I don't see the situation getting better. I don't see de-escalation. Um, I think we've done our outreach, even though we're really dancing the line of what the agenda item was and what was discussed. That's why I gave a lot of leeway. But... Um, I just don't want everybody at odds. I wanted to bring everybody in the same room, have the say. Manager has indicated the steps he's taking and will continue to take with the chief and other department heads in the future. We endorse that. That's why we hired you. We agree with the path that you've chosen and will continue to take. And, um, and, and let it go that venue. You know, I really pushed the limits and had conversation with town council about you know, what we could or couldn't do tonight. And I honestly chose to err on the side of maybe being a little too, you know, I was advised of, you know, any employee, the rights they have, you know, to be tre treated with fairly, not, not, not to attempt to be showing that you're having some sort of hearing 
and accepting testimony when that person hasn't been properly and legally notified and hasn't um, either chosen to come him or herself or send a, another representative. I really opened it wide, which, you know, I feel bad, but I felt like we needed to have this. But to continue to do this and put it in limbo it's not going to be a good thing for the town. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. I've been through many, many actions, and um, it's definitely taken seven to ten years to get through. And I'm not going to bring up those. And once when I was a board member, didn't involve any union employee, and it really, and for the good of the town, um, I worked to facilitate, to heal, even though I was on the right side and <laughs> all the other ones weren't. I didn't raise it then because nobody wins. So I hope we do something tonight and vote because we need to do this to allow the manager to continue on with the rest of the process and we can get back to select board business. Why? Why? Um, Mr. Kiro? No, Chair, I just want to offer a point of clarification. My attempt with the substitute motion, and again, I apologize, I realize it's voluminous, but at its core, what I tried to do was to extract. At, ex at its core, <clears throat> what I tried to do was extract the key points that were touched on in the manager's letter and recast it in our words in a prospective fashion going forward to make clear that we support efforts moving forward. You know, it's, uh, to be quite honest, it's a little bit, it's a little bit um, unorthodox, I think, the order in which we're taking this up. Because a lot of times when we ask the manager to do a c communication, We'll discuss it as, as, a, as a board here. We'll deliberate, and then we'll, we'll accept, and we push forward. And then this is, this is a case where, where a communication has gone out, and I think we all did see drafts and, and individually offered um, feedback, but we didn't have that as a, as a deliberative piece. It, it seems a little bit backwards to me when there's a communication that completely within bounds to, to outline the manager's thinking, to outline the steps that he, that he is taking, to outline the path forward as he sees it, it's completely within bounds to send that out. It just feels backwards to me that we're discussing approving a letter that's been out for a couple of weeks instead of taking those key points, putting them in our words, and endorsing further engagement activities going forward. That's, that's the core of what, of what I'm, I'm looking to achieve. With, mm -hmm. with, um, it, it is essentially a resolution. Yeah. So what I'll do is following that Robert's rule of orders in our open meeting laws. Um, I'll first take a motion by Mr. Kiro, um, seconded, oh, did anyone else? Mr. Did you want to? I seconded Mr. Kiro's motion. That's what I, yeah, I said a motion, but I, I just want to finish the vote and then I'll call on Mr. Dunn. I, I thought we had, come, I, thought, I thought there were still people, I thought John had Well, I just wanted to. Well, we, we have two motions. Does anybody want to add another one? Or? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I'm hoping for more discussion. Okay. That would be my preference. And I, I think John was raising I will be brief. I just want, did want to add, because we do have two motions, and I spoke to one that I'm happy to support Joe's motion. In the broadest terms, it, it, it does provide a response from this board. And as it starts, we reject the writings of Lieutenant Padrini. I know for I don't know anyone on either side of the issue. Depend regardless of what you think the actual punishment. Could you take the conversations outside? Should please? be that would say that wouldn't agree with that statement in all the continuing statements through this motion. So I'm happy to support what is written in here. As far as the main motion, to me, what we're doing here is this was our way, as we said. We have citizens open forum, and we never had any discussion at our meetings about it. This was an avenue to invite people in. And how to do that was we have to put something on the agenda. It was to take the town manager's letter and discuss it and approve it. It's not. The board called the police on you last time. I'm sorry, could you please sit down? This is where the board deliberates. That's a chilling effect. Okay, the could you please? Like okay, thank you. Citizens. Thank you. If, could you please sit down? Or if you want to go out and have a conversation, that's fine. Sorry, Mr. Hurd. So to me, we're voting on the process thus far. If we need to take another vote, I don't know. We'll have to discuss that at a further meeting once the report comes out. 
But this was, again, our avenue to invite the public in, was to put this agenda on, item on, and to say that we think that the town manager has appropriately handled this situation. There's gonna be many, many, there's, there's many opinions as to whether it was correct on both sides of the issue. And we'll use those opinions going forward in this process, in the next time we use this process. But like I said, this, this was the avenue to get this before us. And you know, I don't see the harm in us voting tonight to say that you know, in response to the many questions that we've gotten to, to us and to the town manager, town manager spent the time to put together the process thus far and for us to say that we approve his actions in responding to the community with that letter. Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I, um, I agree with everything in Joe's motion, but I don't think Joe's motion goes far enough. And the thing in particular that I have been uh, frustrated with the public debate about this is that I think that some of the, some, some people have used it as a tool to undermine uh, the authority of the town manager, when I think that who is, I think has done to the best of his ability the job that he's doing. And uh, part of what made me call Diane and say, please put this on the agenda, was that I wanted this board to have an opportunity to endorse what the town manager is doing. And uh, so while I can support Joe's motion, it doesn't go far enough in that regard. And that's why I want to stick with my endorsement of the town manager's letter. Uh, does the town manager's letter have mistakes in it? I'm sure it does. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But what it is, is a representative, uh, it's a mile, it, it was a, um, it was a definitely, a, like, I'll call it a milestone, not a closure, but a milestone in this process. And we should, and I think, and I want the board to acknowledge it as such. So we have two things we can. Two things. So I accept just a, to, to two to friendly clear. amendments. A firm well, there's a to friendly friendly amendment was firm to acknowledge. But I, I don't know if there was an amendment. Uh, I think oh, you're, you're, you you're arguing for what both. I'm no. saying we approve. I'm saying approve both. But uh, yeah. That was my Hard. procedural question. We're not. This isn't a substitute motion where we can only vote for one or the other. Correct. Correct. Right. We can have a one vote, two part motion. We can um, compile the essence or core of Mr. Dunn's motion into Mr. Carroll's or vice versa. Or we can have two separate votes and one vote may be 5-0, the next one may be 1-4, or, or, you know what I mean? If somebody says, no, I just don't want to, I want to. So I, I would look to the two people with the motions before us. How about, so I, I, there may be, a, go, sorry. I, I think I'm feeling a lot like Mr. DeCourcy and for some of the reasons that I stated. I mean, I just, I, I feel uncomfortable. And I, I support the town manager's efforts in this. And I think he's done an incredible amount of meeting and outreach with, with, with folks on this. And if we do make this two motions, I'm not going to vote against endorsing the letter, but I think I'm, this is one rare case where I'm going to abstain. I don't want it to be misconstrued that, I'm, that I reject the, the letter. But, um, and I guess I, what I would say to that is we're not approving it. We're endorsing it. We're endorsing the actions that he's endorsing. Put, forth, put forth of the pathways of how he wants to move forward and what to continue on in the future. That's how, how I about, say it, Mr. Dunn. Uh, what if, um, Help us through this. What if we <laughs> add a, it is further voted to Mr. Uh, Kiro's motion that's along the uh, lines of, it is further voted, and we can put it in wherever, it is further voted that the select board fully supports the town manager's actions and efforts in good faith stewardship 
of the complicated issues of race and equality in Arlington. Come on, Joe. Could please, please, please respect the process. If I allow it at one meeting, it's going to happen at every meeting. Please. Okay, I'm going to I'm take it as. Yeah. You comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, with a firm to acknowledge. But, uh, let me just give me one second. Um, I don't think you had any of the changes, and then I'm going to win. Madam Chair, did, did you want to change the. Or to reread it? Or? Uh, I'm, yes, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm, stalling, okay, I'm stalling for time. It, Mr. All right, Kowalski. I can stall a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I, Claudia withdrawing the original. And, and, and I, I also want to commend Mr. Dunn for getting this on. on our agenda this evening because that's that's that that's where it started and, and I think this is a this is an attempt I think the um, you know the goals moving forward what the manager wants to do going forward I agree with we don't know what those steps are yet he doesn't know what those steps are yet because he hasn't seen the report and he hasn't you know it, it, the, the additional work hasn't been fully developed <laughs> in terms of what it's going to look like so going forward I, I um, could endorse what those recommendations are, just the whole product and the timing of what we're being asked to do. So with that, if there's something that Mr. Dunn has that we can all get to get, get to an affirmative vote. And, and just to say to that, that, yes, I agreed to do this tonight, recognizing that I did receive counsel of how it could go astray. Um, I don't see this as something that is coming up bi-weekly. Some of your remarks can be construed that way. Um, we, we have to, if, if we don't agree with what the manager's doing, um, like I don't want to keep evaluating him on the steps that he's taking every two weeks. That's your job. No, no, I understand that, but I, I also think to, to Mr. Kerr's point, and this, this letter came out in early August, and here we are um, a lot later talking about it. and that's that's the part that feels a, a little strange in terms of what we're being asked to do, so. Mr. Dunn, you want to reread? Uh, so putting it last, just because, uh, but I'm open to other places. It is further voted that the Arlington Select Board fully supports the town manager's actions and efforts and good faith efforts to steer the town through the difficult issues of race and equality. Did you mean that to be Actions and yeah, actions and, and good faith efforts. I mean, maybe efforts is oh, one you. of the efforts should be strict. Thank you. It is further voted that the Arlington Select Board fully supports the town manager's actions and good faith efforts to steer the town through these difficult issues of race and equality. Okay. That'll be taken as a substitute motion. Uh, or an amendment. To uh, an amendment to Joe's, and I'd withdraw mine. There's a, a motion by Mr. Dunn with the amended language. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Okay, we now have three motions before us. Um, I'll, I'll, I think we have one. I think we just have one. Okay. Mr. Dunn withdrew. Okay. Yeah, I will draw mine. We now have two before us, which is Joe's original motion. And then we have Joe's, the second one is Joe's original motion with the affirm to acknowledge and the last sentences that Mr. Dunn. Um, I accept those as firm. Okay, so I will take that up first and if that goes through by a majority, the other one automatically will fail. Um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd with um, the, I'm calling it amendments, affirm acknowledge as well as the um, sentences read by Mr. Dunn to appear yeah. after it is further voted. Well, I, can we just, I, I think we should give that, the, the motion, the original motion was by Mr. Caro, and I think he You want to go back to yeah. that? Okay, then, all right. Say we're going front by. All right, the, well, then if we'll do that, it was a motion by Mr. Caro, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. I won't repeat everything again. I was just trying to do it to make sure everyone who has to write it down yeah. got it. Um, any further questions or comments? No. If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? 500. Thank you. I lost my agenda. Wait a minute. Where is it? Next, we have correspondence received. Uh, is there a motion to receive by? Move receipt. Mr. Hurd, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro. 
Any discussion, questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Was Mr. Seltzer here? No. Um, we have new. He was. I think he's gone. Yeah. Uh, new business, Mrs. Kropalka? No, other than I expect to see you all on Saturday. That's yes, a town day. If you'd like to be there at 5.15, we'll see you. Uh, Attorney Hein? No new business, thank you. Mr. Chaplain? I'll only remind the board that uh, at the next meeting of the board, I won't be sitting here. Sandy Pooler will be because I will be representing the town uh, to our sister city in Japan of Nagokakyo. <laughs> Wish me luck. Okay. Good, trip. Good luck. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I'll shake it up. Mr. DeCourcy? Uh, you are going to come back, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll see how well I adapt. Just very, very briefly, I, I want to give a shout out to the class of 1959 from Arlington High School who just had their 60th reunion this past weekend. And the thing that struck me, um, my Uncle Bill is a member of that class. He showed me the program. And in the middle of the program, there was a narrative about the new high school and encouraging all the alumni mm -hmm. to take a look at what's going to be built. And it, it just shows you. Um, you know, what a great community we have that 60 years later, people are still interested in what their, what their old high school looks like. So to the class of 1959, congratulations. Sorry. Nothing. Nothing. On, on that note, oh, I, I got a big scare today when I got one of my um, daughters from another mother, my Rebecca's best friend, showed her first, her daughter, first day of kindergarten. She had class of 2032. Huh. And I went, huh? And I figured out the myth. I'm like, oh my lord. I'm sorry, Mr. Carroll. I've spoken way too much to me. <laughs> Mr. Hurd? I just had one thing that I wanted to bring up. I saw a few things about met the marijuana licenses for the community host agreement for the two companies we, we gave the community host agreements to. They've had a few community outreach meetings, but I've had many people talk to me and ask me what the time frame is, and I don't know. Would it be reasonable for us to, at some meeting in the future, ask one representative from them to come in and tell us where they are in the prospective process and give us a, a timeline? Well, I was speaking to the manager about this on Friday, um, that they, the two processes are at different points. and. Um, at some point when he deems appropriate, whether it's an agenda item or board info or email, um, at a place where he thinks he has enough information on one, perhaps not both. Yep. Um, so what I uh, started having the conversation, Mr. Chaptelaine will continue to do that to see if it should be an agenda item, if it should be board info or, or something like that, uh, as well as um, I'm just being cognizant of um, if, if you want to have a person in from each, that's fine. I just to want to make sure that Attorney Heim says that's something that we can do. I don't want them to say, hey, we already appeared before you. We're now with ARB, and they might take it the wrong sure. way. So I don't. That's fine. I would just, it can be an update yeah. from the manager, yeah, but it just some point would like yeah. to know where they are in the pro process because one might be three months away, one might be eight months away. And we can do that. It's not an exact time frame. Mr. Chapterlain, can I get credit for that? That that's the exact conversation I had with Your you. Your person gets full credit. <laughs> no, I, that's exactly what I said. That's exactly what I and I said. I don't want to waste my colleagues' time. It doesn't have to be. A, but if it's an agenda item, that's fine too. But um, so I've been thinking, looking out for you all with, with the manager. Um, with that, our next meeting is September. 23rd, 2019, I'll take a motion to adjourn by so Mr. Moved. Curo, seconded by Second. Mr. Discorsi, all in favor say aye, all opposed, unanimous vote.